Hello and welcome to Gordon School for the Gordon School Under 16 Invitational Sevens. We have a fantastic day of seven aside rugby ahead of us here in Surrey. The rain has come in, which is a little disappointing, but I'm assured it's going to go away and we'll get a nice dry track for the rest of the day. Pristine surface, though, of course, here on the Bradwell 3G at Gordon's, where we will be bringing you live coverage all day from. Three other pitches out in the backfields, a couple already underway. But we will be beginning things with Wellington College against Finbrook. Four groups today, five teams in each group. Top side from each group goes through to the cup semi-finals. Second to the plate semi-finals. Third to the bowl semi-finals. And fourth to the shield semi-finals. Fifth place, go home at lunchtime. And it's live games all the way through until 12.15 for the final group game. A little bit of a break after that. And then those knockout games begin at 1.15 this afternoon. But we have a long, long way to go before we get into those. And this first game, as you can see below, Wellington College versus Finborough to begin. Wellington College will be kicking us off from left to right in their gold and black hoops. Finborough receiving in their red and blue hoops. Finborough gather that kick off and look to spread the play early on. Going the direct route. <laughs> Penalty, Wellington College. Promising ah. start from the Berkshire side, but Finbrough's defence equal to them at the moment, but now Wellington start to find some ground. Into the 22, that's a lovely offload, and it's going to be an opening score for Wellington College. Oh, they've got a, such a rich sevens pedigree. And they start with a bang. Conversion is good as well. And a 7-0 lead for Wellington College. We see it again here. It's lovely running. And as the tackle came in, the blind offload out to the left-hand side. And Wellington College have the opening score. Towering kickoff bounces and eventually into Finbra hands. And Charlie Tamani and Tamani still going. Tamani's going to go all the way, is he? Oh, what a response. Charlie Tamani, the Northampton Saints under 16, gets the try. And no sooner had they gone behind. And they are straight back with a try of their own, and Charlie Tamani is the man to get it. Started every game for the senior second 15 this year. And here he is in the colours of his age grade, scoring a try. Tom Green's conversion doesn't quite land, but Fimbra will be buoyed by that response. Time to run. Superb pace. Just enough strength to get himself across the line. Just about get that ball down. You can just see it there. Now the defence starts coming in. But not rolling away. Penalty to Wellington. They go quickly. Back. They're going to look to go around the outside. One on one at the back here. Pass comes in. That's beautiful play. Defence is good. But Wellington College keep possession. 
And they're on the front foot now. Not too much depth on this attack, so they have to cut back in against the grain. Could be a bit of space on this blind side, though, if they can find their way into it. Fimbra defence is really good there. And they get a penalty for their efforts as well. Kick comes in and there's no sweeper in for Wellington College. How's the bounce? Bounces favourably. Kick charged out. And then a hack through from Wellington College. Slightly unusual period of sevens play this. Fimbra get the ball in hand and start to play now and breaking through the first tackle. Penalty comes in, no clear release. Keep working, keep working. Keep Referee going, cross side. Happy to let the quick penalty go, even though it didn't leave the hands. Ball bounces off the post, could go anywhere, falls into Wellington College hands. And there's broken field here. Oh, that's lovely handling from Wellington College to get that one away. And now it's just a foot race for the corner. He's going to have to go from very, very deep, but he's going to go all the way home. The arm gets raised. From the ball bouncing off their own post. Wellington College go the length and get the try. Conversion is good as well. That puts Wellington hey, College 14-5 in front. You see it again here. Did so well to move the ball away from that contact situation. And then it's just a foot race. From 22 metres out, he knows he's winning it. Unsurprisingly, after that lung-bursting effort, Wellington College have rung the changes. Over. And they're going to score straight away, Wellington College, back-to-back -back tries. He's out to a slightly more comfortable lead now, 19-5, soon to be 21-5, with under a minute left in this first half. But as anyone that watched the Six Nations yesterday afternoon knows, this is not over yet. Simple score. The end from Wellington. That kickoff's not going to go 10, though. We'll have a free kick on the halfway line. And a chance before the break for Finbrook. Just to close that gap. No, leave now, Yellow. Barnes takes it in. Barnes again. Through Tamani. Tamani so hard to put down. Eventually brought down. Ball is ripped in the tackle. But with no release, it'll be a penalty to Fimbra. Barnes goes quickly. Might be a bit of space if they come back this way. Ball is lost, though. And Wellington College have advantage. They move it wide. And that's half time. An exciting first half, four tries in all. An early score from Wellington College. Fimbra hit back. And then back to back scores from Wellington College gives them a half time lead of 21 points to five against Fimbra.
Half time done. The three beckoning both teams. Get ready for the second half. This Pool C game. The others in this pool Eton College, Ipswich, and Sherbourne. I'll tell you what, one to mark in the cards in this group. Live at 11.15, Wellington College against Ipswich. That should be a bit of a cracker. In the meantime, it's Ipswich's Suffolk rivals, Finbrook. They're kicking off. Under pressure early on as Wellington College make half a break in the space on the left-hand side. Drift defence has to come in hard from Wellington College, but the ball doesn't go to hand. Just buys the defence enough time to get the cover in. Wellington stretching things out, showing a bit of pace and a bit of guile there. Greasy surface not helping though, they just lose their footing. Do well to keep the ball alive though. Now they've got some space on the left hand side to try and work into. Imbra's defence is well organised at the moment. There is just a little bit of space on that far side and Wellington College only need a little bit. They start the second half as they finish the first with another try. They move out to what will surely become a 28 points to five lead. That's exactly what happens. We just see this again here. The Fimbra defense looked in good shape they were trying to use the touchline as that extra defender, but you just see there the delay on the pass forces that last defender to just turn his shoulders, and that just opens up enough of a gap for Wellington College to take advantage and scamper in for their fourth try. Kick off. Bounces into touch, just came off a Finbra arm. So that's why Wellington College had the line out, and that's Wellington College really starting to enjoy themselves now. Try number five. A brilliant start to this second half from Wellington College. A brilliant performance overall. They're making some more changes now. It's a comfortable. 33, soon to be 35 points to five lead. And they're in business. We see it again. Kick off, bounced out into touch, just off a of Fimbra arm. And Wellington, go quickly. Just glide through the gap. I'll have the restart. Four minutes left to play. Up next, we move into Group B, Brighton College against Mill Hill. Mill Hill, much like Finbrook, a fast rising school on the circuit. Finbrook. Try to get the passes away, but the Wellington defence is big. Just knock it on in the tackle, so we'll have to scrum down. First scrum of the game. Referee just trying to explain to Wellington College that they need to actually arrive at the mark. They've all managed to do that now. Coach! Set. Tamani goes straight through the middle and Tamani still going. They may not win this game, but Tamani's left his mark on it. Two tries for him, two tries for Finbra. And Charlie Tamani with a wonderful solo effort. Strikes back for the Suffolk side. Conversion. Doesn't quite go. 
but that was just magic from Tamani. He ran the hard line off the scrum. Stepping off that right foot, then with the big fend. And then he had all the pace in the world to finish it off. Charlie Tamani has marked himself out as one to watch for the rest of the day. Wellington. Playing with advantage and breaking through. Now they're one-on-one -on -one with the last man. Chase comes in. Fend is there. Offload is good. Good, patient play from Wellington. For another try. <laughs> Glorious stuff from Wellington College. I'll tell you what, conversions from under the base, so no gimme here. As you see there, got to get a lot of height very fast in a tight dead ball area. I think if I was the skipper, I might be saying to the referee, I think I'm going from in front of the post, if you don't mind. 40 points to 10, though, Wellington College lead. They won't be too worried about that conversion. Bouncing ball. Ball's away of Fimbra. Thirty odd seconds to go. Fine. Ball almost intercepted. Fine. Fimbra would love to finish on a high and the ball in this man's hand. It's always possible. Penalty Wellington College, though. Tamani made the break, got himself a bit isolated, though. Wellington take advantage, they go quickly. Through the gap they go, Scrag tackle comes in. Offload off the floor, could be a bit of space on the left-hand side. How's the finishing? Not too bad at all. Not too bad at all. Wellington College finish the game with a score. Referee confirms conversion will be the final act. A comfortable win in the end for Wellington College. But Finbrook showing signs that as this day goes on, it could be one we're talking about as well. Conversion doesn't go, so it's going to be a 45 points to 10 victory for Wellington College. A fast start in Group C for them. Up next, Brighton College against Mill Hill in Pool 2. 9.35, that one, so just a couple of moments' time. But what a performance that was from Wellington College. They have marked themselves out as one of the teams to watch as this day goes on.
Back underway here at the Gordons under 16 Invitational Sevens. Brighton College against Mill Hill. From the half on you. Kick didn't go 10, so Mill Hill. Their white and brown hoops. And free kick on halfway, Brighton College in blue. With a little thin stripe of maroon across it. from Brighton College. Scrum. Forcing the error. Thank I'll have the scrum. Strength and stability through every phase, all right? Don't move on until I tell you to. Come on, please, please. I'll tell you what. Crouch! From my position here, I can see the sheer depth Set. that Brighton College have lined up with off this scrum. What have they got planned? Shift it out to the far side. They have a little think about going around the outside, and just as well they did. Theo Lawson ghosting around the outside and getting the try. Oh, that is just sheer individual brilliance. There was nothing on, absolutely nothing. Just the line of the posts. Theo Lawson had other ideas in mind. Just look at this. The footwork stands his opposite man up. Ghosts around the outside and then has the pace to finish it all off. What a score that is. Timing! Kickoff goes 10 this time. Hill Hill. Knock on advantage. Lose the ball forward, so Brighton College have it again. Move it out to this right hand side. Nothing coming, we're coming back play. Knock on advantage from White. Scrum blue. So you can hear the referee saying, nothing coming from it, so we'll come back for the scrum. Knock on, scrum blue. Come up, dude. Come up. Good space last time. Keep it up. Crouch. Boy. Set. Wait. Get it in. The well, last time Brighton College had a scrum. Wait. It's called a scorcher. What will we see off this one? And they move it out to the hands of Lawson again. This time, Mill Hill defence is wary of him. They get the numbers across, but that could mean the space on the left-hand side now if the ball can shift there fast enough. Bounce pass just allowed the defence to drift across, but still Brighton College may make something of it. A second score for Brighton College. The threat on the one wing of Lawson, forced the defence over to one side and that meant that eventually there was going to be space on the other. And that's exactly what they found. <laughs> Conversion is good. And Oscar Aziz is the man to get the score. There's tidy footwork to cut back inside. And he could just ease his way home for a 14-0 Brighton College lead. And this time they go deep with the kickoff, saying to Mill Hill, go on, lads, try and play your way out. It's a sensible tactic. It forces the error. Knock on, Scumbly. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Brighton will have a scrum. 
just on the right hand side of the pace it's been a useful platform for them coach they Five. may cover from this set hold wait there use it shift the ball across this time Wilson is the decoy Taylor now they move it to this right hand side try and get the ball back into the hands of Aziz gathers the bouncing ball then shifts it back in one kick out towards Lawson could be a nice idea ball sits up though into Millhill hands Millhill get the offload away goes to hand it's a first proper attacking chance for Mill Hill, but it's turned over by Brighton College. That's wonderful work on the floor. Ollie Miller, I think it was. And then dancing through goes Monty Taylor. Straight through the middle. Taylor gets the try. Conversion off the crossbar. I tell you, we're going to see an awful lot of conversions off the crossbar today. Such is the tightness of the dead ball area. It's a brilliant turnover from Miller. And then Taylor. The skill and then the pace to work his way through the middle. On you four. Kick goes straight out. Yes, yes. So it'll be a free kick on halfway to Mill Hill and perhaps just a chance. And this final play of the half to get something on the board. We'll look down the right hand side to begin with. Bouncing this way and that. Good footwork. Eventually caught. Another turnover on the floor from Brighton College. They've been so clinical in this first half. And then, of course, just as I say that, they lose the ball forward. Advantage to Mill Hill. Lovely, lovely offload. The advantage is over, so... Mill Hill can't afford an error. And they don't, they get a penalty. Still, this first half goes on. Oh, hell. Oh, they'd love to finish this half with a try, and that's exactly what they're going to do. <laughs> Reward for their efforts. Mill Hill get the score. It's the final play of the half. Conversion won't quite go, but Mill Hill are on the scoreboard and we head into half time. Brighton College leading against Mill Hill, 19 points to five, and this is the try. Just close that gap up as we head into the break. It's another brilliant offload in the tackle. Just created that half a yard of space to work into. Half time, Brighton College 19, Mill Hill 5. Short, sharp half time. Referees whistle goes. Just enough time for me to remind you of the next game. 9.55, the next kickoff. And we move to Group A for that one. And the hosts make their bow on the live stream. Gordons will be hosting Ship Lake College.
this. In the meantime, it's pool two. Alongside Brighton College and Millfield. Millfield? Mill Hill, I should say. Oh, St George's Weybridge. Worth. And Bishop Wordsworth. That forwards. <laughs> Knock on six in front offside. On the five there. On the five. Back ten. Penalty to Mill Hill. Hills up after that score at the end of the first half. They start the second half with a score as well. Certainly the right Tackle. part of the field to have a good Ross. go at it. All backwards. Brighton College defence is making life oh so tough though. Mill Hill bide their time and look to start again. Oh, and that's really, really well worked. Ball lost. Brighton. Tackle now, release! Possession. Advantage over for the knock. Ghosting through. Up towards halfway. Is Dutton. Ten be on the board. No, no. He's gone beyond and come back off the pitch. Back ten. Back ten. College pushing, probing, and it's the ghosting running of Ollie Miller. Oh, it's lovely, lovely play from Ollie Miller. He gave the defence the eyes. Everyone thought he was going to try and use the man on his outside. And that just allowed the half a gap for Miller to shimmy through. It will be him. Convert his own score. It's a decent strike. Just goes to the left-hand side of the post. Right in college lead. 24 points to five now. Just look at this again. Spread the ball out to Miller. The timing on the kick -off, okay, stay behind. Footwork. It's just mesmerising. And as he sees that defender's hips turn, he just goes through. Lovely score. Offloading really nicely through the tackle, just trying to find a little bit of space, stepping this way and that. Now they move the ball wide, just a little bit too much lob on that pass, though, allows the defence to come across. They still might yet make something of it, though, trying to go around the outside. Lost forward at the last, though. Just a scrum, just a scrum. So, so close. Thank you, white changes. Start him up for me. Mark's here. Come on. Wait, wait. Time off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time's off. Happy white. Yeah. Time on. Crunch! Find! Set! Back to Jones, back to Jones. Get it in. Brighton from behind their own line decide there's a bit of space to kick into there's no sweeper there it's not a bad option at all bouncing ball could go any which way Mill Hill have it but lose it forward it was Brighton College that lost it forward we'll have a scrum to Mill Hill knock on scrum right here's Mark come up right come up Number of sides today opting not to defend with a sweeper. Don't be surprised Coach. if we see a few kicks today. Find. Set. 
Blues ground. Here, here. Yes. Penalty to Mill Hill. Play on. Mill Hill ghosting through. Oh. oh, there was nothing on whatsoever. <laughs> but no one told Mill Hill. Kick back through, kick back through. And the North kick London side, side get their first score of this second half. Referee instructing them to kick from the other side of the post. Say so it is such a tricky task that would we'll definitely be kicking the other way. It's absolutely brilliant. Seemed like there was no gap there. We found a way. On you, let's go. With a minute left to go. This is not quite done yet. Brighton College can hold on to it though. That will be that. Doing a good job of just that. Just up 15, 20 seconds by keeping the ball in hand smart play on the south coast side really really good play from brighton college so patient just pushing and probing this way and that and whether they know they're running the clock down or not as they <laughs> pop the ball through the legs back ten, five back down they get the penalty Knocked down in the tackle yeah, from Mill yeah. Hill. Clock is very, very nearly done. I'll let you know when. I'll let you know when. Time is now in the red. Brighton College knock the ball off the field. <laughs> Referee's final whistle goes. And that is a very, very tidy performance from Brighton College. 24 points to 12. They take the victory against Mill Hill. Like Wellington College before them, Brighton College make a bit of a statement. Very, very good individual displays within that one. Up next, it's the hosts, Gordons. They take on Ship Lake College in about a minute's time. As I say, up next, it's the host, Pool A, Gordons against Ship Lake College. Gordons will be in their traditional green. Ship Lake College in their red, black and gold hoops. And since I've got team sheets for both teams in this one, we might as well have a quick run through them. Ship Lake College lineup, Bertie Demery, Sam Pickering, Sam Baker, Jack Henshaw, Will Kemble, Angus Mullins, Will Huckle, Kane O'Connor, Mikey Taylor Fitzgibbon, Freddie Holgate, Alfie Cheek and Ollie Perkins and Gordons line up with Elliot Straver, Jack Seddon, Archie Gray, Joe Hill, Alfie Richards, James Main, Ryan Hunter, Joang Tamang, Ashwin, Aloysius, Will Lawrence and Dom Beavis. Now the only slight hiccup is we don't have 
numbers to go with the Gordon's name. So it is going to be a slightly Shiplake dominated naming here. We will do our best to keep you abreast of things as Shiplake received the kickoff from Gordon's and we're quickly underway here. Gordon's are in front of the kicker. Ship late, go too quickly. Oh, excellent. My best, my favorite refereeing decision of the day. Ball didn't leave the player's hands from the penalty. So the referee brings us back for a Gordon scrum. Time and time again, we see it, don't we? Players trying to go quickly and the ball just doesn't leave their hand. Crouch, bind, set. Gordon scrum. They've stacked the left-hand side, but they might have a little run around the right-hand side. That's exactly what they do. But Ship Lake College are wise to it. And earned the penalty as well. This time they do take the penalty correctly, but they couldn't go quickly. The referee pulls them back. Fellas, let's put on please, tell the ARs. Chip Blake. There might be some space on the left hand side. Let the offload away, and there is a bit of space on the left hand side. Space for Alfie Cheek. To get away for the try. Says in my notes that he plays like the Tasmanian devil. I don't know about that. But he certainly has plenty of pace about him. Murphy Cheek with the try. Inversion as well. And that's a 7 0 lead. For just a moment there. Gordon's had forgotten they were playing sevens. They were about to take the kick off themselves, but realizing it's the try scoring team that kicks off in sevens. Kickoff bounces into touch. Here Gordon's line out. Inside their own 22. There's your Gordon's numbers. Three calls. Three calls. Yeah. Ten, yeah. Ten, leave it. Penalty Gordons. Ball is allowed to bounce. And now it goes forwards and Ship Lake have it. Could they pounce? They're certainly going to give it a good go. Ball just goes backwards. Advantage is over, says the referee, but Ship Lake still have the ball in hand and they go the direct route. Tackle comes in. Now they move it to the left hand side, but the ball is just lost. And Gordons will have the scrum. Fellas, uh, Mark's here, nice and quick. Both teams just keep the gap until set for me, alright? Crouch. Bind. Set. Gordon's. I think they've spotted some space and there's no sweeper once again. I'd say it's been a bit of a theme. 
Chip Blake just get back in time to recover it, and they could have a good chance to counter here, but the pass just goes forward. Oh, so close for Mikey Taylor if it's given. Saw the space, just couldn't get the pass to work. Nice and quick, please. Uh, no for a ticket, it's unlike. Good bit of captaincy there from Lake. Engaging the referee in some light chit chat. Crouch, yes, down the air. Bind. Set. He's come from Twickenham today. Stepping round, six black. I wonder if he's in the catchment area for tickets. Now Ship Lake will ask him as this halfway is on. Gordon's just across the halfway line. A little look to this left-hand side. Could be a bit of space. Oh, there's definitely some space with footwork like that. Tackle comes in and a foot in touch. Smart defensive play that from Kane O'Connor. Who's the son of a gold medal winning Team GB Olympian? That's Kane O'Connor. Uh, clock is accurate. Got a hook, Gordon, the line is yours. Ball spilled off that line out, so Gordon's had advantage but didn't gain any, so we'll come back for a scrum. Just lost boys, scrum down, green ball. Clock is still good. Scrum that is probably going to prove to be the final play of this first half. Gordon's to put into the scrum. Trailing 7 0. Set. to finish on a high. It's a big scrum from Ship Lake. Oh, it's a huge scrum from Ship Lake. They turn the ball over. Can they make something of it now? O'Connor goes scorching through the middle. Oh, he is going to make something of it. Kane O'Connor <laughs> with the try. Gordon's were looking for the big finish to the half, but it's Ship Lake that get it. Kane O'Connor bursting through the middle. His side have a 12 0 lead that becomes 14 as we head into half time. A crucial score from Ship Lake College. It was a huge scrum that gave them the opportunity. Then they just move the ball into the hands of O'Connor, a bit of footwork, and then raw pace. Send us into half time with Shiplake College leading Gordons 12 points to nil. Half time done. Gordon's already. Brighton College. Sorry, Brighton College. Shiplake College. Having a little huddle. Now they're ready to go. After the conclusion of this one, it's across to Pool 4. The Seaford College and the Oratory will be going head to head. We've got seven minutes of action left in this one. As Gordon's in green, recover the kickoff, but then lose the ball forward. So Ship Lake will have the scrum. 
You're outside. Mark, 3 9, you're in or out. 3 9, you're in or out. Crouch. Bind. Set. Chip leg. Have a little gander down the left hand side. Ball just lost in the tackle though, so Gordon's. Have the ball. Off B6. No more. Good work. We've got numbers here on the right-hand side if they can use them, but defence is good from Shiplake. Good offloading this from Tackle! Gordon. Tackle! Like. <laughs> penalty. Yes or no? Try and shift it to the left-hand side. Shiplake went back 10, so we'll come back for another penalty. Gordon's keen to get a hurry on. Next one goes. Always backwards. Loose ball. And a Gordon's line out on their own five metre line. There's your mark, Gordon. Uh, Shipley. There's you. Fellas, get the message across to both teams. And when you can see penalties, you need to be about 10. Next one's yellow card. Yeah, the line's the middle. Ten, hold your line. Ten's good, yeah. Josh, it's ten good. Go, please. Chip Blake, steal the line out. Opportunity here for a third try. Loose ball, though. Lost forward, and Gordons will have the scrum. They escape. Say pick fellas, nice and quick. Nice and mark. Nice and quick, stability, crouch. Okay, bye bye fellas. When I say nice and quick, I mean let's get set quick, let's not go in quick. Crouch. Bind. Set. It's another big scrum oh, from okay. Ship Lake. An illegal one, so Gordon's have the penalty. They go quickly. There's going to be a yellow card here. The referee gave the warning earlier that the next side, not to get back 10, would receive a yellow, and it's Ship Lake. Weren't back 10. They're down to six now for a couple of minutes. Soft fingertips, scrum down, black ball. The ball is lost forward. It will be a Ship Lake scrum. A useful opportunity for them just to kill a bit of time. Uh, Crouch. Find. Set. It's another good scrum from Ship Lake. Oh. It's left hand side, they might find a bit of space down the left hand side. The team with six get across the line for their third try of the game. Try is awarded. And despite the numerical disadvantage, Ship Lake College score their third try. Sam Baker it was. Managed to scamper home for the try. Conversion won't go. But it's a 19-0 lead for Ship Lake College with about two and a half minutes on the clock. And I was told before the game that Baker, who's just an under 15, is worth watching for his pace. And he just showed it there, didn't he? In three strides, he got up and running. It was just enough to evade the drift. 19-0, his side now lead. Kickoff is a good one, but it's well claimed. Well, in fact, it might have been lost forward, was it? No, it went backwards, says the referee. So Gordon's keep possession. Cut back against the grain, and then it's lost forward through contact. It is slippy out there. 
has been raining this morning. Chip Blake. Going direct while they're down to six. And going direct is proving successful. Taking Gordon's on in the confrontation and winning that confrontation. Alfie Cheek gets across for his second try of the game. Twice now they've scored with just six on the field. That is brilliant from Shiplake. And after this conversion, they will be back up to seven. Conversion doesn't go, but it's a 24-0 lead. Just look at this. They knew they were numerically down, so they just took Gordon's on physically and came up trumps. <laughs> 30 seconds left to go. The ball lost forward from the kickoff. Chip Blake scrum. It's going to be pretty close to the last play of the game as well. Ten to go, boys. Fact, as I say, it's going to be pretty close too. They've taken the time to get formed up. And it is going to be the final play of the half. Gordons have the free kick. And they go quickly with it. Could be a bit of space down the left-hand side. And a huge tackle comes in from Chip Lake. Gets them the ball back. Oh, they've stood up so well physically in this second half. And they're going to be home for another try. What a way to finish a hat trick for Alfie Cheek. Well done, Gordon. That's a brilliant, brilliant performance from Ship Lake College. A wonderful way to sign off the half as well. They've shown their quality at times and they've shown their power too. The conversion lands. And we'll finish up with Shiplake taking the victory 31 points to nil against the host Gordons. That is a statement performance from Shiplake College. I'm sure we'll be seeing plenty of them later on. Up next, it's across to Pool 4 and Seaford College against the Oratory. But here in the lead group, it's Shiplake that take the victory.
just about ready then to get underway in this one. Seaford College against the Oratory. The Oratory will be playing by the looks of things from left to right in their gold and black hoops. Seaford College in their navy and white hoops. First game of the day for the Oratory. Seaford College have already got a victory under their belts against Trinity. We will see how things go in this one. Second of the day, or will the oratory begin the day with a bang? All is to be revealed over the course of the next 14 minutes. Oratory kickoff, lost forward by Seaford, and the oratory gather. He says no advantage, so it will be an oratory scrum. I will go black and white. Great! Find! Set! Oratory. All away from the scrum nicely, and they're going to just try and see if they can find a bit of space. Nearly, nearly worked out for them. Hello, Bonnet. Would have been in space if that one had gone to hand, but it didn't quite. Scrum down, Seaford ball. Great! Find! Set! <laughs> Penalty to the Oratory. 23 Seaford white standing up. Guilty of driving up. The Oratory, you've seen plenty of the ball early on, and they're going to make that early ball count. Ollie Robinson it is there, <laughs> storming through the middle. <laughs> Conversion is good as well. Yeah. So the Black, please, guys. And the oratory get the reward for all that early possession. Robinson threw half a dummy and then just straightened his line and Ghosted home. <laughs> Towering kickoff from the Oratory, but well claimed by Seaford College, who to find a bit of space down this left hand side, and there is a bit of space still going at Seaford College. They could have got that pass away, they'd have been on, but instead it's a turnover to the Oratory. Clamped over the ball was Max Hucker. London South Central Academy man. Clark Ball. bangs that one towards the corner. Ball. Gentlemen, move across. Black, black. White, come in, please. Line out. Gentlemen, or a tree line up. Defensive mark. It's a shortened line out for the oratory. Move the ball out into the midfield. And Seaford meet man and ball. Offload goes, but it goes forward. Sharp defence that from Seaford. Came from out to win and caught the player man and ball. Great! Bind! Set! Keep your heads down, guys. Seaford trying to ghost around the outside. Oratory defence is good, though. Oratory defence is very good, in fact. Loose ball has to be tidied up by Seaford College. They do a good no, job. Leave now, it. hands away! Right there, see that. Seaford 
on their own try line. They're going to have to try and play out. Doing a good job of it. Doing a very good job of it. Breaking through the first tackle. It's a loose offload, but it does find a player. And then that time the ball is lost forward on the floor. Both sides have found the offload game tricky. I've said it before, but it is greasy out there. First arrow of the game of the day here. It was raining. That water does sit on this 3G surface. Here, we'll just speak. Crouch. Find. Set. Or a treat. Looking for a second try. It's been them that have been in control for most of this game. Oh, and that's delicious play. <laughs> Glorious footwork, JJ McCarthy. Another one of those London South Central Academy players in this oratory lineup. And you can see exactly why with footwork like that. Conversion doesn't go, but that was pure magic from JJ McCarthy. Seaford looked as though they had it covered. But the dancing feet of McCarthy. And the oratory, a second score of the game, a 12 0 lead. Penalty Seaford. Move back, move back, move back. I tackle. Blue line, guys, blue line. It's come advantage. Advantage over. Seaford. Finding a bit of space, moving in towards it, and then the ball just slips through the fingers. Options, come on, line up. We'll come back. Presumably for the scrum, it is indeed for the scrum. On the five. Lost forward into touch. On the five, please. Look on the five. Your back five, please. Final Looking play of the, the half. Great! Find! Give me space now. Set! And the R treat. Take advantage of that being the final play. Knock it out into touch. And we head into half time with the oratory leading Seaford College 12 points to nil. It has been a very, very good performance from the oratory. Dominated possession, dominated territory. A 12 0 half time lead. Signals the end of half time. Up next, we'll have the hosts back on again. Looking to bounce back from defeat, Ship Lake College as they host Framlingham College. That's Gordon's against Framlingham at 10.35. But now, the second half of the Oratory against Seaford College and the Oratory leading 12 0. Seaford College 
will be getting us started. Send the kickoff into the Oratory 22. Is the second half got in store for us. A big counter ruck from Seaford College. That's fantastic work from them. And they get a penalty for their efforts as well, and they go quickly. A determined start to the second half from Seaford College. Can they get a try to go with it? They try to take them on around the outside. Defence is up to it. Seaford definitely bringing the energy at the start of this second half. Move back, move back, move back. And still they move quickly. And then the ball is lost forward and the oratory will have the scrum, but that's an improved start from Seaford. Real sense of energy about them in this second half. Great. Bind. Set. Go on, give him space. Thank you. choose to kick because once again there is no sweeper in place and that is why you sometimes need a sweeper because the ball just pops up perfectly into the hands of Adi Hector the multi-talented sportsman showcasing that talent on the rugby field and it's a third try for the oratory ball. They spotted the space in behind. And with no defender there to cover, the ball just popped up oh so perfectly into the hands of Hector. They missed that conversion, so it should be 17. Referee just correcting there to say that there was no conversion, so it is indeed 17-0. Our scoreboard had it right, but the one here in the ground didn't. Norwichry 17 0 up here against Seaford College. Seaford starting to break through the line here, finding a bit of space. Could be some more space on the right hand side, but the tackle comes in. And then the rip is made. That's really good play. Leave him now, leave him now. Tomo Donovan. In fact, I think it might have been and now the space is there for McCarthy to score his second try of the game. The Oratory's fourth. They have been ruthless. Conversion doesn't quite go <coughs> it was a brilliant turnover from Clark and then McCarthy just weaved his way into the space to escape for his second try 22-0 the oratory lead and that is a magnificent kickoff so Backwards. contestable see for college do Backwards well again. To get the ball under their control. But they're on the back foot a little bit. The roll. archery defence presses up. The archery really are playing with so much blue. purpose, and they get the penalty as well. 21 white side entry. No back. No, you're not back 10, so you've got to move back. The archery. Probing for another, almost through. Now they are through. Looks like Ollie Robinson with his second of the game. What a performance from the oratory. Conversion is good. This time, it was the bludgeon, wasn't it? They went direct. Offload comes in, and 
Straight in, under the post was Robinson. 29-0, his side lead. Kick doesn't go 10 though, so see for College. We'll have a free kick on Make halfway. sure we're 10! Stop creeping, guys. Too good. And they get a score before this one's up. 90 odd seconds left to do it. They'll have a penalty with which to do it. And they're going to be playing with an extra player. Okay. That's it. Right, drop 10. Looks like Valle Bonnet is going to be spending the remainder of this game on the sidelines. So Seaford College have got about a minute and 15 seconds left to go, and they're going to be playing with a man extra. Can they make it count? Tackles still come in from the oratory. It's a wonderful tackle. Knocks the ball loose. Seaford managed to tidy it up there. And there could be a bit of space here for the Oratory. Oh, that's really, really good drift defence from the Oratory. They've done so well there because they were outnumbered completely. Player on the far channel did so well just to tread water and allow his supporting defenders to come to him. And that intelligent defence eventually forces the error. And they'll have the scrum. Okay. Really, really mature bit of defending that. Guys, come on, please. Guys, the scrum. Hold it. Great. Bind. Set. Hold now. The Oratory just knock that one off the field and that'll be full time. Fantastic performance from the Oratory. Earns them a 29-0 victory over Seaford College. What a performance from the Oratory. Up next. We switch back to Pool 1 and the host Gordons taking on Framlingham College. That's up next. So, up now, Gordon's against Framlingham College. 
Borden's the host today, of course, of this under-16 Invitational Sevens. Graham Liam College have come across from Suffolk. Been a tricky start to the day for the host side. Defeats to Tunbridge, and as we saw in the earlier game, to Shiplake College. Ramliam have actually already had one game as well. They were taking on Hurstbeer Point College, but the result for that one yet to come through. Ramliam will be getting us started. Wearing blue, playing from left to right. Gordon's in green underneath that kickoff. And taking it well. Lost forward by Framlium, so it'll be a Gordon's scrum. Okay. Crouch. Bind. Set. Back. Loose ball, but still under the spell of Gordon, who now That's have the released. penalty. No exactly release from Framlium. Back. The kick comes through from Gordon's, and once again, no sweep it, so the chase is on. Framlium are going to win the race. Let him up. Oh, and they do really well there, just to bounce straight back to their feet. And there could be a chance of a counter-attack here for Framlingham College. But the ball is lost and Gordon's have it. No advantage, not possible. They'll come back for the scrum. Well, it's been an effective tactic today, hasn't it? That kick through. So few teams That's defending with any kind of sweeper. Respect that space. Nine, two, two. Crouch. Find. Set. Gordon's move the ball to the blind side. They have to juggle with it a little bit, but then they find some space. Now they sweep back towards the right hand side. All had gone to hand, they had the numbers, but they still recovered possession. I'll have to start again, though. Big clear out comes in, almost too big, and it allows no, green, Framley no to hands. come over the top and poach that one. Advantage. High tackle. Yeah, please. High tackle comes in, so it's a penalty to Framley. High tackle. Simple switch, Advantage, ball is on. ripped through the tackle and lost forward by Framlingham, so Gordon's. Stay. Use! A bit of a debate as to who should pick it up, but they eventually get the ball Advantage moving. Over. Release, Three blue! Calls the advantage over. No hands! Huge counter up from Framlingham. They are making life really tough at the breakdown. Okay, use. Hands from Gordon's and another kick through. And once again, it's a foot race to hair after it. Bounces up into Framlingham hands. They're going to look to counter. And they may just find a bit of broken field space here. Oh, a little spin through the tackle. That's delightful. Offload goes and then lost forward. Always going back to it. There'll be a scrum. Green, quicker with forming, please. Crouch, bind, set. Gordon scrum. Let's try and move the ball left, but defence is good from Framlingham College. Away! An impressive aspect of their game, as does their work at the breakdown, and they poached that one, and they could find a bit of space here to break into. 
How's the pace on the outside? It's not too bad at all. Cuts back in as the drift comes in. Still going though, from Liam College. Put down! Big, big tackle comes in from Gordon's. Superb. Did really well to keep it under control as well. <laughs> Penalty to Framlingham though, off their feet at the breakdown with Gordon's Framlingham. Back! Go quickly, they've got numbers on the right hand side, if they can find them. Find them they do. Oliver Ford finishes it off. Yeah. Yeah, from that side please. Plays first 11 cricket. Plays in goal for the first 11 hockey. But it's here on the seven-a-side field that Oliver Ford is making a name for himself. Get here across the whitewash. Conversion added as well. And with a minute and a half left to go in this first half, it is Framlingham College that have the lead. Seven points to nil. They had so many numbers on the outside, they almost blew it. They got the ball into that space eventually. Oliver Ford finishing it off. Restart finds a bit of space. But Gordon's eventually get hands on. No hands! Forward. Form, please, College, so it'll be a Gordon scrum into the final minute of the half now. Crouch, bind, set. Some tidy footwork there just to try and find some space, but then it's lost forward on the floor, so that'll be half time. A tight and cagey half at times. But Fram Liam's work at the breakdown ultimately proving the difference at the moment as they head into half time with a 7 0 lead here against Gordon's. Both sides ready for the second half. Gordon's getting us back underway. Family College in blue claiming the restart. 7-0 at the start of this second half. But a penalty for Gordon's. No, no, no. Back where it was, please. Drop, 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 White. Gordon's working their way towards the Framlingham try line. 
Up to the right-hand side, Gordon scamper over. Their first points of the day. Perfect start to the second half from the home side. Excellent, excellent play from Gordons. Conversion won't go, but they're on the scoreboard. It's a tight game, seven points to five. Bramlingham have the lead. Brilliant start to the second half from Gordons. Give me that space, please, fellas, at the kickoff. With some numbers on this right hand side. It's good hands from them. Drift is good from Gordon's. Framling no, into no. the Gordon's half. If they can stretch things the other way, they may start to find some space, but the ball the Leave it just one. doesn't go where it needed to. As Gordon's tried to hack it through, it bobbles out into touch. But a half a sniff of a chance there for the home side. Just call, call it last second then. Call it last second. Lads, speed please, come on. Hold it, yeah, cool, let's get set up please. You in? Nine, can you nine, please? Step up. James, next is a free kick. Three, two, one, set. Back. On him, on him. Cutting back against the grain, good tackle comes in, but the offload off the floor. As the defence having to react fast, but again it's loose ball. No blue! Penalty, <laughs> Gordon's. No, we're over here. Come on, within a metre. Gordon's. Being the dominant side in this second half and getting on the front foot here. Is there some space out there? <laughs> Not yet. Blue 11 never on side, yeah? But it won't matter because it's a penalty to Gordon's. 11 never on side. <laughs> Lads, your mark is here. I will always point. <laughs> yeah, <I'm not> <laughs> 7, 11, 8 never on side. Next one takes two minutes. Offside again from Framlingham, and that's yeah. a warning from the referee. Yeah, Next well, offside, it'll be a yellow card to Framlingham yeah. College. The referee's to gonna to use this opportunity to just to have a word. Watch on, never on side, 11 and 8. Framlingham with a chance to go into the lead. Charging towards the line, up to the line, and over the line. Gordons go in front. They've been on top in this second half. And they have their rewards for it. Two tries, and now into the lead. Conversion just slides to the right-hand side. But Gordons... 10-7 in front. Oh, wow. Just good, hard running. And it earns them the try. Keep that space. Go, 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 go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not now. I need a clear, who's in the line? I need a clear receiver. 
Channel, two, two, channel. Birmingham line out <laughs> on their own five metre free line. Kick too long, too long. They get the free, free kick. Back ten. Gordon's going too slowly. Birmingham need a score and they could do with it fast. There's not much more than a minute left in this game. I'm happy with that. Yeah. You rather great. fancy if they score, they win. They're going to have to work hard for it. Gordon's have their tails up and have the lead, and that ball's just going to run away into touch. It was a nice idea. The space was there. The Dad, ball I need the line up set, on this Stop hard me. 3G surface this just rolls as as we away. Are, we are trying to help. That's back 10. Number 10. Blue. Way on. Line out goes a right. But still finds Gordon's hands. Big tackle coming in from Framlingham. No hands, no! He's got to roll first. Gordon's Advantage. taking on Framlingham and getting the Seven penalty for the high tackle. Still determined to play, Gordon's. Number six, number six, never onside. It's a yellow card to Framlingham College. Never on time. Harry Cartwright playing in his second Gordon Sevens tournament, taking the punishment for the team for repeated offsides. <laughs> and that is going to be that. Gordon's knocked the ball off the field. Their first points of the day, their first victory of the day. It's a 10-7 victory for Gordon's. They trailed Framlingham 7-0 at the break, but a magnificent second half sees them earn the 10-7 victory. Fantastic stuff from the hosts. Attention now switches as we move into the second half of the group stages. The pool two, we're up next here on the live stream. We have Bishop Wordsworth against Mill Hill. That one should be a cracker. Coming up for you at 10.55. So, pull two now. Bishop Wordsworth against Mill Hill. And a big hello to Mrs. Martin, who I believe is watching, because we've just had notice that Fred Martin, her son, wanted to make sure his name was correctly on the team sheet, because his mum's watching. Hello, Mrs. Martin. Bishop Wordsworth kindly have given us their team sheet, Oliver Puffett, Seb Slater, Adam Runyard, Reuben Smith, Reese Wood, Sid Matala, Isaac Hepburn, Darcy, Bakai, Harry Hankin, Thomas Lozier, Fred Martin, and Reuben Williams. Bishop Wordsworth in blue playing from left to right, Mill Hill in their brown and white hoops from right to left. And it looks as though Mill Hill will be the side that will be getting us started. Send it long towards Bishop Wordsworth. It's a good start. 
Oh, Bishop Ware as well. Advantage knock on. All lost advantage. forwards, eh? So we'll have a Mill Hill scrum. Mill Hill playing their third game Whoa. of the day. 24-12 to Brighton Set. College in the early game here on the live stream. And an excellent victory in their previous game over St. George's Whoa. Weybridge. Five. It's just the second Set. game of the day for Bishop Wordsworth. Lost by the narrowest of margins to Brighton College. We're looking to turn that one around here against Mill Hill. Seven, get off them. Loose ball, gathered up nicely by Pukai. Who makes good meters as well, still going. Is Darcy Pukai. <laughs> and his team have a penalty as well, Mill Hill going off their feet. Let him go 10. Smith goes quick. Smith still going, Smith. Looking Drop to get the, the offload bounce, away. Yeah. Doesn't quite stick though, so Mill Hill <laughs> escape with the ball and we'll come Drop back for the scrum. Throw! Five! Set! It comes in, and once again, it's a big chase after it. And this could be Hell. anyone's Mill Hill winning the race. How's the bounce? Not too bad. They roll across the line. Yep. Okay, that's quick. Yep, Mark, where we go? Gone, knocked on, yeah? Yeah. In fact, no try, knocked on. No try, ball was lost forward. Knocked on. Bishop Good. Wordsworth. Escape there. Once again, though, that kick through proving an effective tactic. Yeah. No one at home to cover it. As Mill Hill dived on it. Whoa! He just lost it forward. That's a Five. great spot from an eagle eye Set. touch judge. Or assistant referee, as we're supposed to call them nowadays. Mill Hill turned the scrum over, though. Release! Big opportunity there. Fifteen this. hands off. What was that? Advantage knock on. Bishop Wordsworth have done brilliantly though. Advantage Made over. life so tough and have turned the ball over. And then just lose the ball forward in contact. Knocked on, knocked on. Mill Hill ball. It'll be a Mill Hill scrum. Knock on. Knock on. Ladies and gentlemen, it may not make much difference to you at home, Whoa. but it makes a huge difference to us here. The Five. sun has come bursting Set. through the clouds, finally. Advantage, blue offside. Hopefully it's here to stay. No hill. Oh, no. <whistles> we'll have the penalty, actually. Offside, all of your backs. Bishop Wordsworth, offside. Offside. It's been a bit of an issue all day, actually. Size offside. Buck ten. <laughs> Knock on, no advantage. Offside. <laughs> offside. Not ten back. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Probing down the left-hand side. Taking on this Wordsworth defence. Bit of space on the left, but driven out into touch. Excellent defence. Uh. Shit words, words. Stab the ball through. 
keep saying it's not a bad tactic today. Seven got away. Oh. Ah. Oh, ball. Taking it on Whoa. direct. And again, kicking through. They've certainly had a conversation Advantage, knock on. about the possibility that's on offer with that kick through. Still advantage, knock on. Really tight one, this. Advantage over. In it to go until half time. Still nil nil, but a chance here for Bishop Wordsworth. Can they escape? Not quite. Tackles come in. Can they get the offload away? They do. Knock on by White. Super work and then calm control from Reuben Smith. It was good work Knock on from Run Runyard. That's play, Dad. Scrum. G Bishop Wordsworth. Final play of the half. Back, back. Crouch. Will we see a score Five. before the half is out? Set. Possession stays with Wordsworth. They go direct, offloading off the floor. Could be a bit of space. Might be a chance on the outside on the left. Offload doesn't go to hand, but. Lost That's forward. Cool. Knock on, half time. And that will be half time. We go into the break, nil nil. First time we've said that today. We head in. Bishop Wordsworth, nil. Mill Hill, nil. A big second half to come. It has been tight. Probably going to stay that way. Both sides ready for the start of the second half. Just to let you know, the next game coming up, it's a biggie. Wellington College against Ipswich, 11-15 in Pool 3. Or then the remainder of this Pool 2 game between Bishop Wordsworth in blue and Mill Hill in the brown and white hoops. Backwards. Bishop Wordsworth. Yep. Go, go, go. No. In possession, but they've knocked it into That's touch. So a Mill Hill line out inside their own 22. Blue. Nil nil. At the break. Blue. Hooker. Yeah. Dad, stay. <laughs> Not straight. Not straight to the line out. Bishop Wordsworth will have the scrum, and this is a big opportunity for the first score of the game. Scrum on the 15. Blue ball. Yeah, lads, take a step. Keep going. Yeah, back, thank you. Crow! Five! Set! One against the head by Mill Hill, though, and Not then a on. huge drive Not back on. in response <laughs> from Bishop Wordsworth. We'll Not have another by scrum. By that was an extraordinary bit of scrummaging from both sides. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, lads. Lads, wait. Yeah, wait. Lads, wait for my calls, yeah? Yeah. Nine, nine. On the side. On the side. Crouch. Bind. Set. This time, it's a more even scrum. Pops out the back for Wordsworth. They try and scamper around the outside. Have they made it across the line? No, just Let short. Let the ball come wide. So close no. from Yard Runyard. And then across the line, sharp work. Sid Matala, opening score of the game. It's taken a while, but there it is. Runyard went close, and Matala was there to pounce from close range. And that is an absolute beauty of a conversion as well from Ruben Smith. So we see the try again. Runyard went around the outside. He got so close to scoring himself. It was a brilliant cover tackle. But Matala spotted the space and realised with his reach he could get across the line. 7-0, Bishop Wordsworth lead. Fantastic Whoa! conversion to that add to the try. Turnover's good. And Matala, the try scorer, Force man. turns that ball over as well from the kickoff. Release! Attacking chance here for his team. Advantage not ruling. Playing with advantage as well, they'll not have the ruling. penalty. Three. And suddenly, Back ten. momentum Back ten. is with the Wiltshire side. Advantage not ten. Bouncing footwork from Puffett. Whoa! Golden chance for a second score here. They have a little scamper around the fringe and a successful scamper as well. Reuben Smith gets the try. Two in quick succession for his team. And after a scoreless first half, two in a row for Bishop Wordsworth. The conversion doesn't go, but they have a 12-0 lead, two and a half minutes left to play. It was great play from Smith. Threw the dummy and then just stepped around the fringe. Twelve nil they lead. It's a brilliant kickoff, towering and falling into Wordsworth's hand. Lost forward by Mohill. Scrum down. That's Bishop on, Wordsworth ball. They're taking That's their time nine. about it, just eating this clock away. Nine. The side, Mature play. Throw! And Lozier. Five! We're putting the ball into the scrum. Set! Takes the ball away from it very tidily as well. Smith takes the ball to the line. Great offload to Lozier. He flings it out wide. Could be a bit of space here for Runyard. Roll. Eventually Six, hauled down. Up. And then Lausier round the fringe. Twice now they found space around that fringe. Third try. Bishop Wordsworth move 17 nil in front. And with 30 odd seconds to go. That's surely going to be the victory. In fact, I rather thought that Smith might take his time over that conversion. But uh, he's keen for more. 
Towards the end. With half a dummy and then just shot through that gap around the fringe. 19-0. Bishop Wordsworth's lead. Final play of the game. Cam Mill Hill can a score from it. They barely had the ball in this second half. Backwards! <laughs> offside. Ball was lost forward, but then offside, offside, so it's turned into a penalty. So we'll keep playing. Right. You are offside, you're in front of the guy who knocked on. Could there be a fourth try in this second half? Whoa! Six hands up! The boys in blue. Knock on by blue. Natala loses it forward. Over. And then Mill Hill loses it forward. And that will surely be that. It is indeed. A quite outstanding second half performance from Bishop Wordsworth. Earns them the 19 0 victory over Mill Hill, a fantastic second half. And we move now to pool three and a fantastic matchup, Wellington College against Ipswich. That one's coming up in just a couple of moments time, but here in this pool two encounter, it finished up Bishop Wordsworth 19, Mill Hill nil. Wellington College against Ipswich said it's been a pretty tasty group this one all three Ipswich and a narrow victory in their opener against Eton College 24 points to 22 and then another narrow one in their previous game against Sherburn 26 21 Wellington College, meanwhile, opened up with a storming victory over Finborough, 45-10, but then went down 22-7 to Eton College and then lost in a tight one against Sherburn, 26-24. The other result in this group that's worth pointing out is that Finborough beat Eton College 10-7, so it really is an absolute lottery, this school. Wellington put over 40 past Finborough then lost to Eton, who then lost to Finbrook. But There's no predicting which way this one's going to go. Ipswich are going to get us started in blue. Wellington College in gold and black to receive it. Ipswich get us started. It's a good kickoff as well. Oh, delicious offload. Scramble defence is good from Ipswich. And they get the penalty as well. They had to scramble, but they scrambled oh so well. Backwards. Switch. 
stretching the ball to the left-hand side and now trying to move it towards the right-hand side. But big shot comes in from Wellington College and the ball is lost forward. Ipswich led by number 10, George Herbert. Visual mark, fellas. Let's bind up. Keep the gap until set, please. One of a few players in the Ipswich Crouch. lineup who have a bit of first team experience. Matthew Hutnick being another. Set. Wellington. Need a victory here. And pushing for the opening score. Could be some space on the right hand side. They've got the numbers. Big tackle. tackle comes in. Great bit of defence from Ipswich, refused to buy the dummy. And then diving on the loose ball, just lost forward. Great commitment from Ipswich. They are working so, so hard. Wellington College surely thought they were in there. How many times have we seen that work? Two on one on the outside, you throw the big dummy. Defender turns the shoulders and you're in for the try, but the defender refused to turn Point. their shoulders. And Ipswich Set. live to fight another day. Wellington College. Still in the Ipswich 22 and racing for the corner. And this time they get over the line. They knocked once and were refused entry. But at the second time of asking, they get across the try line for the opening score of the game. It's a cracking effort from the conversion, but it doesn't quite go. So Wellington College have a 5-0 lead. Stretch the defence out to the left. And then just simple hands did it to get away on the outside. 5-0 Wellington College lead here Sorry, against boys. Ipswich in this topsy-turvy full three. It's a sensational kickoff as well. Just got contact in the air. Bounces the oh, way of Ipswich, who get the penalty for contact in the air, but that really was a wonderful kickoff. Highly contestable. Ipswich looking to find some space. Big tackle comes in from Wellington College. Ipswich maintain possession. Bouncing ball again. Wellington defence really is putting pressure on. Switch maintaining possession and then ghosting through a gap. Where's the support? Finds its way through and then they just lose possession on the floor and it'll be a Wellington College scrum. But Ipswich showing that try scoring threat that has seen them scoring so many points today. Crouch. Five. Uh, as long as it's set, there's two late now. Crouch. Bind. Set. Okay, straight out, boys. We'll go again. Let's do me a favour. No pushing until the ball's in, please. Crouch. Bind. Set. Big, big scrum from Ipswich, and it earns the penalty. Big opportunity here for Ipswich. And Wellington didn't drop 10. It's going to be a yellow card. Referees have been getting impatient with this today. Time and time again, sides haven't been retreating. And Wellington College will see out the half with just six players. Can Ipswich take advantage? They're going to work their way to this right-hand side. Trying to just tie in some defenders and then scampering away for the score. That's brilliant. <laughs> Ipswich 
Wellington down to six players and Ipswich wasting no time in taking advantage of that. Harry Griffiths was the man to score it. Conversion is good as well. And that sees Ipswich into the lead, 7-5. Ball was popped up from Herbert to Griffiths. And cutting back against the grain, stepping off that big right foot of his. He scores the try for a 7-5 lead. Absolutely towering kickoff. Pressure comes in as well, and it's lost forward by Wellington College. Boys, have an option, scum a line up. Nice and quick. Scrum is called. Ipswich call for the scrum. Final play of the half. An opportunity to extend that advantage. Crouch. Bind. Set. Big scrum from Wellington, but Ipswich get it away. Move it into the midfield. Dancing this way and that referee has to take evasive action, does well to do so. In fact, the ball just skips off the fingertips, and so that'll be half time. A tight half of rugby, as we might expect in this tightest of groups here at the Gordon School. Under 16 inv invitational sevens, half time, Wellington College five, Ipswich seven. Back underway in the second half. <laughs> Kick off. Bounces out into touch, so it'll be an Ipswich line out. Scrum Wellington. Find. Set. Regather, play on. Brilliant First skills man. to hold on to that ball, but it's Seven. been ripped clear by Ipswich. You have the penalty. And to keep the pace high on this game. Well, to keep the ball alive, and then that's a wonderful fend from Herbert, who's eventually hauled down just across the halfway line. And the ball is ripped clear by Wellington College. And then a turnover 
for Ipswich. Too much movement on the floor from Wellington College. Back on. Yeah. Ipswich ghosting through. Oh, magical, wonderful play from Harry Carter. A brilliant solo effort. There was nothing on at all. But Harry Carter bound away. Magical stuff from Carter. Absolutely brilliant. Conversion was good as well, so it's a 14-5 lead for Ipswich. I told you this was a game to mark in the diary. And so far, it's living up to the hype. Wellington looking to get back to within a score as fast as they can. Got the penalty. Big wide looping pass to the far side. Wellington College doing a really good job of keeping this one alive. And then the big Ben comes in and around the outside they go. It's a race for the try line and it's a race won by Ipswich and then intercepted brilliantly. Oh, wonderful. I think that might be Finn Ridges that got in for the intercept. And now the counter could be on for Ipswich. They're a long, long way to go. But they might just have an opportunity here as they try to go around the outside and then Tackle. step back in. Tackle comes in. Griffiths thought he'd seen a bit of space around the outside. Time to go. Darryl, just make that clear for me. Wellington, Wellington have made a change in life player. Happy days, captain, please. Captain. Referee's just got his clock stopped. Um, I know it's not your fault, but your coach has made a change during life play. It's a penalty offence. Okay, so be that penalty. In the middle. You don't, you I'll, don't I'll often see that, do you? A penalty for an infringement by the coaches. On the pitch at one time, it's penalty. Just wait for me. Can't make Back a change go. during Happy. live play. Back we go. Thank you. When you ready. You don't often see that at all. Correct decision, though. Hip switch. Trying to find a bit of space. Passing game is good from the Suffolk side. Two on one on the outside. Can they get the ball away? Not quite, but they get the penalty. Let me know. Chance is there, and the try is there too. Joe Keaton. Ipswich with their third score of the game. Conversion as well. 21 points to five they lead. Changes. Brilliant Change play Thank you, Tom, from this young Ipswich side. Let's watch. Play, got ten. That is an inch perfect restart. Go, Wellington College have done really go, well go, to go, claim go, it. Go, it. Just enough time. Hey, that That's might be that go. now. Is a big booming handoff 
from here. Nacho He's comes in. His feet play on. Hip switch. 12 away. 10 Want to finish on a high. Good option. Penalty advantage, seven entry. Final few seconds of the game. Hip switch looking for a four. <laughs> Could it's be a chance on. Just loses his footing there. The Spragans. But it doesn't matter because they get the ball away anyway to Ben Bullen. Ipswich have their fourth. The conversion will be the final act. A brilliant victory for Ipswich. That's time, fellas. And a lovely score with which to finish. Conversion doesn't go, but I doubt they'll mind too much this Ipswich side. Cheers, guys. Victory is theirs. A fantastic performance. They trailed 5 0 to Wellington College, but came absolutely storming back for a 26 points to 5 victory. And this was the final try of the game. What a beauty it was as well. footwork there putting the defense on their heels and even when he lost his own footing able to get back to his feet and release his mate on the outside final score Wellington College 5 Ipswich 26 vital victory in pool 3 for Ipswich attention now though turns to pool 4 Seaford College against Dulwich College. Big game that coming up very shortly. Seaford College against Dulwich College then. Next up, Dulwich College will be getting us underway in their dark blue kits. Playing from right to left, Seaford College. Their white and navy kits from left to right. Referee for this one is Daryl Chapman, Neil Whittington and Mike Roy. Running touch. Here with that, it's not gone 10, we're playing. Here we go. Doesn't go 10 notes, so we'll start with a free kick on halfway for Seaford College. I'm playing that. That's always backwards for me. Unless you've got anything else. <laughs> you, blue, hands in there, play. Thank you. Penalty to Seaford College. We'll play that. We're through now. Another penalty for Seaford, and it's an instant always yellow high. card for Dulwich that College. Always high by you. High tackle. You never dipped at any point to make the tackle. Here we go. Play. So Seaford yep. with an it early play, advantage. And Seaford looking to go the long way around and going around the outside. That's fine. I'm happy with Josh that. Andrews. The captain feeds yep. it back inside to his mate Archie Williams, who finishes it off. Seaford College lead. 
It's brilliant work around the outside, the long way around from Josh Andrews. Had the pace as well and got the ball inside. Williams with the finish. The conversion was good as well, so it's a 7 0 lead for Seaford College. We're going to have a line out inside the Dulwich 22. Yeah, I'm going to the back, Mike. Back 10. One in the channel. Back 10. It's fine, we're playing that. Knock on by Blue. Dulwich got a hand on it, but it went forward, so Seaford. Still have the ball and looking to explore the outside channel. Happy with that. Away. First person lift. Backwards. Play ball on. stolen by Dulwich, but then taken over. Take five it over their scrum. own line. So it's a five metre scrum to Seaford College. Yes, okay, bring him back. They've made that one work for themselves. Yeah, 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 got it. Just spotted. Former South Africa international, Bobby Skinstad. On the Crouch. touch lines here. Find. I have to see if Set. we can get him on a mic. Familiar nice voice. Him, Across the World Cup, wasn't he? Seaford win the scrum. Have a little dabble down the blind side. No clear lift. That's fine. Leave it, Blue. <laughs> you on the floor. Over there. Over there. Over there. Over there. Play. On the line. Go. Got the penalty. Play. Don't run at me. Work where I'm pointing. Seaford. Not held, that's fine. Away now! Still in Away. possession. Dulwich defence is good at the moment, though. <laughs> Loose ball, but a penalty. There's too many penalties, Dulwich. Too many penalties. Yep, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I will. Seaford to the outside. That's really good cover from Dulwich. Driving the player into touch. Four minutes gone. Anyone disagree? They'll have. Line out inside their own 22. That's really, that's really that's good defensive defense. set that from Dulwich College. Could easily have got Who's themselves in, the in trouble. Who's in the channel? Who's in the line? Yep. Okay. Ten. Go back. Hey, close the gap. They're pinned. Come up to them. Here we go. Lovely. It's play. Yep. Let's go. Okay. wasn't straight, was it? Straight down the line here. What do you want, guys? Line out or scrum? scrum line call. out, not straight. Guys, Seaford, over here. call for the scrum. Here. It's off the back, we're playing. 4.47. Nine, start alongside him, then you can disappear. Crouch! Bind! Set! Seaford then continue this period of territorial dominance. Can they get another try to go with it? Up to the five metre line. Could be some space here. Ball just goes off the shoulder and into Dulwich hands. Away now, get out, 23. We're giving the benefit of the doubt here. Dulwich survive. More than survive. Dulwich bursts through the middle. The chase is on. But the chase ultimately won't quite succeed. Dulwich College get away. It was a valiant, valiant effort from Seaford College chasing back. But Dulwich College get the try. Coast to coast. On the South East London side. This conversion would draw them level. Strike isn't too clean. So Seaford keep the lead, seven points to five. But just look at this again, deep inside the 22. One big fend. And then all the pace in the world to get away. For a moment or two, it looked like the catch was on. But as the lactic acid was burning through both players, 
The dive had to come in, just couldn't quite get there. Back 10, please. Free kick on halfway to Seaford College. Moving towards final play of the half. Knock on, scrum advantage. All lost forward, though. We will have time okay. for the scrum. One white, one blue. Last one. Last play. Just here, just here. Just here. Last play. Crouch. Bind. Set. Falls out with playing lifted. Knowledge win the scrum. Can they finish off the half with another try? Still moving forward, Dulwich. Oh, they are going to finish the half with a try, are they? Yes, indeed. That's half time. Great pace, great power. And back to back scores for Dulwich College to send them into the half time break with the lead in this game. Conversion doesn't go, but at half time, you happy with those Wellington players? Dulwich College have the lead, 10 points to seven. Seaford took the lead early on, but back-to-back -back tries from Dulwich. This one, right on the stroke of half time, means they head into the break with that 10. Seven lead <coughs> and a big, big second half coming up. Followed by a big, big game in Pool One, actually, where Hurst Pierpoint College will be taking on Tunbridge. One's not to be missed. And then the final game of this pool stage at 12:15 or thereabouts. Maidstone Grammar School take on Trinity. Pool Four, 12:15. Hurst Pierpoint College against Tunbridge, 11:55. But before all that, the second half here of Dulwich College against Seaford. Seven in front, AR call. Oh, we'll get the second half started with a Dulwich College penalty. Seaford had got in front of the kicker. That's fine, he's on the ball. Backwards always, backwards always. It's out. No hands now, there we go. Who's there? Let's lift it. Lift it, thank you, we're playing. If I could work out the running line, so buy a lottery ticket. Dulwich. There we go. Half through a gap. Move, move, move. Forward there on the floor. Leasing it forward, we'll have a scrum down. Seaford ball. There we go, Jens. Let's go, come on. It's a scrum, let's get on with it, guys. Crouch. 
Fine. Set. Hold it. Too early by Blue. Leave the ball. Leave the ball. Deepard free kick. Off you go. Too early push. Early drive from Dulwich. Let's go. I concur. It was too early. Deepard. Away now. Here With we go. Plenty of time. Down the rucks. Fine. To try and get the noses back in front. Just three points behind and over five minutes left to play. Backwards first. Oh, oh, oh. Happy with that. Backwards first. Bouncing ball. Don't bunch up, lads. Don't bunch Stays up. on their side. Away now, release. Backward. Well taken above the head. And then well executed to get through the gap. Trying to find a bit of space. End up just having to hit the brakes a little bit. Dulwich defence had covered off that space nicely. Just be a little bit for Williams out on that far side. Goes to ground. No, no, I'm happy with that. He made contact with Blue. Blue stepped off him. Swing it out over to this far side. Good tackle comes in. There we go, back foot. Good little patch of possession here. Seaford College trying to tire out this Dulwich College defence. Williams beats the first player, gets the offload away off the floor. Now perhaps there's a little bit of space on this left-hand side, but the ball doesn't quite get a hand. Bounces out towards Seaford, who then get the penalty. So still they keep the defence working. Yeah, go on, Williams again. Scragged. No, 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 no lift at all. Uh, Johnson, Young, Michael, okay. Yeah, yeah, I've got it. Struggling to break too far out there in 22 here, but still maintaining possession and crucially putting this Dulwich defence under a bit of stress and perhaps that might tell now as they go bursting through. Cover tackle comes in. Offload is good though, and they're gonna get their try. The patient build-up is rewarded. With a try for Toby Pierce. Kick in field. Buddy, buddy, kick in field. They were so, so patient. And eventually, they got the reward for that patience. Classic, classic sevens. Keep possession, keep working. Tire the defense. And then when the opportunity to strike comes, strike with precision. That's exactly what they did. Let's go. Seaford College back in front. Conversion was good as well, 14-10 they lead. Play Just a couple of minutes right. left on no, the no, clock. Dulwich in no mood to stay behind for long, though. Getting themselves on the front foot right away. Not held. Over. Oh. Out. Out. Now, release. Thank you. Defence is good there from Seaford College. Can we move it? Here we go. Can we move it? Can we move it? Can we move it? One more. Reload, reload. Hit the deck. Came forward off white, knock on. Advantage is over. Dulwich trying to scamper away down the left hand side, just caught in defence. Release him, release him. But Dulwich you. deep into the 22. Now around the fringe they go. They're going to get their noses back in front. They weren't behind for long. Vast response from Dulwich College. Oh, Magnificent effort with the conversion. Just comes off the upright. So it is still just a one point lead. 15 14 Dulwich lead. A little under a minute left to play. This game still anyone's for the taking. Let's play time off. 50 seconds. 
But what a response to the try that was. Seaford. Oh, what a tackle that is from Dunwich College. Seaford keep person. possession, though. Yep. First person lift. Hold on here. Oh, well, I say that. But Dulwich earned the penalty. Good work at the breakdown. All they've got to do here now is just eat the clock up. But they want more than that. Surging towards the try line. Back foot. Yeah, I've got it. Thank you. Clock is in the red. That was a knock on. Seaford shoot out, but knock the ball forward. And that's going to be that. Dulwich College get the victory. Good work, guys. Thanks for your help. They had to work oh so hard for it. But in the end, after the Seaford College try, Dulwich responded and they take the victory, 15 points to 14. So up next, Tunbridge against Hurstpier Point College in Pool 4. In fact, in Pool 1, I think it might be. There we go. And you may have just heard there, I've got co-commentary for this one, Archie Caldwell, whose brother's out there on the field today. Yeah, playing number 13. Playing number 13. There we go. The Hurstpier Point College. I think this might be the, is the last round of the... Uh, I uh, believe pool, it is. Pool game. How, how have they been getting on today? Um, solid all round but um had a bit of a stumble again in the first round against uh ship um ship lake tough team i think they've topped the pool actually yeah ship lake have looked very good we had them on earlier on an absolutely storming performance first get us underway similar kits today for these two first fair point in red and white but uh, all red on the back which will probably help you identify them from tunbridge who are in pink and white with no numbers on the back of their shirts, which is always a bit tricky. I think it's uh, quite important to get an earlier uh, foot in the game, freeze out. So if one of the teams can put their foot down, that would be very important. We've seen plenty of that early tries, making all the difference. Big scrum from Tunbridge. Mike Mulroy, the referee. I'll play it. They've gone five. The shrill blast of the whistle there. Tunbridge. Work it up towards the 22. Stop the tackle. I think seven's a really good patience game, just finding that gap and then, then, then uh, really contesting it. Oh, we saw a fantastic example of that in the previous game, Seaford holding on to possession for a good two minutes and then eventually getting their try. Oh, it, 
10, Will Lomberg getting away. Not, not much support though. First man, it's fine. Poached by Tunbridge on the floor. <laughs> but then a penalty for her spear point. Clear out around the neck. Ooh, yellow card. That, that can have a massive tail because then that overlap on the outside is always there. Well, make sure he's gone. It certainly is. And for the next two minutes, Tunbridge are going to be down to six. Okay, when you're ready. Clean out was just a tad too high. Hurstbury Point College have the penalty. Ball long looping pass to Harry Mather on the wing. Gets caught out though. In called on the ball. Hand off one. Good little run there. Sports there. No. That's fine, the ball was out. Huge clear out from Tunbridge, whose work at the breakdown really has been their biggest quality in the game so far. They've done really well in that area. He's facing the outside, oh, just can't get that final pass. Good step, he's away, he's away. And tries to hurt, what? It's the scramble. Hurst come out on top with the scramble. That's Pier Point College with the opening score of the game, scampering away down the left-hand side for a 5-0 lead that will surely quickly become seven. It does indeed. And the Sussex side lead seven points to nil here against Tunbridge in this crucial group game. The loose ball pounced upon and then the pace to go around the outside. I think this might the be the decider for the play, actually. Yeah, second place in the pool goes through to the plate. Third to the bowl, fourth to the shield. And of course, the group winners go through to the cup. Fifth place in the group goes, goes home at lunchtime. Strong kickoff from Thing. Well recovered from Tunbridge. Struggling to pick it up. They've regathered. Chip through. Regathered with pace. Great cover tackle from number nine, Finn Beecham. Massive hit from number seven, eight, Ed Scorey. I got a knock on. Utterly outstanding tackle from Hurstwood Point College there, and it could give them a chance for another score. They call him the uh, Hurst Ben Earl. <laughs> Playing against Ben Earl's former school, of course. Used to wear this shirt with pride. Red on the line. How many, please, gents? Three. Tunbridge line out. Just shy of their own 10 metre line. Looking to string together a bit of meaningful possession. Really, if you can keep the ball for a good few phases, you, you're most Straight likely going to. Player and there was a competition options from away. You're most likely going to find that outside edge, that gap that you really got to capitalise on and get that try. Grand penalty to Tunbridge last time. Let's see if if uh, Hurst can pull it back. Show their dominance in the scrum. Coach, find, set. Finds Finn Caldwell. Not finding any spaces. Gets tackled. Oh, oh, an unlucky execution of the pass. Ball's alive. It's good ambition alive, from player. Hurst to try and get that offloading game yeah. going. In the outside space, the outside space, they've got to see it. Shot from Finn Caldwell. I'm happy with that. I think it's just momentum, that's not forward though. <laughs> Big you hit can't from... You play the ball while you're not on your feet. Tag it on the ball, Finn Beecham. Harry Mather, oh, four hands. Three gathers, getting away. Bring them, he brings him down. Corey, it's Corey. 
makes a run, gets through, no hand off. Oh, can't quite keep a hold of the ball. But nevertheless, a great, great run. Thank you. Regathered by Finn Beecham. But tries to find the outside edge, beats one. They've got it, gets tackled, sports there. No lift. Ed Scorey's on the ball, then to Finn Caldwell. Not within the Finds the outside space, here he goes, here he goes. Back him up, back him up. There you go, there you go. Inside line to Will Lundberg. Great line from Finn Caldwell. Great, great little run, great little bit of piece of skill. In the inside line to Will Lundberg. I thought we were about to get a moment for the family album there. Commentary on your brother scoring the try, but he gives the oh, pass inside. I would have I gone crazy. Superb work from her. So they get the conversion as well. And they'll head into the half-time break, leading Tunbridge 14 points to nil. Two wonderful tries. We look at this one again. Caldwell around the outside. One. Lovely offload, just like a Finn Russell pass. They do call him the Hurst Finn Russell, sometimes. The Hurst Messi these days, don't they? Yeah, Hurst. Half time here, Hurst Beer Point College 14, Tunbridge nil. <laughs> we off. Just to put me to it. Just about ready for the second half. Tunbridge will be getting us started wearing their pink and white hoops, playing left to right towards Hurstpier Point College, who lead 14-0 at half time in their red and white hoops. I think Tunbridge are going to really need something to get back into this game. Maybe an early, early try, get the momentum going, just like the Scotland game in second half oh, no, boys, yesterday, when uh, Wales started picking up some momentum. Here, Finn on the outside. Here he goes with some gas. from Finn Caldwell. <laughs> bit, bit, of, uh, bit of wheels on the outside. That's not unlike him. Uh, only a brother could finish off a piece of commentary on his own brother with that's unlike him. Now I think it's really important that Hurst just seal out this game with uh, keeping possession, just trying to find the outside edge. Conversion good as well. 21-0 lead as we look at this again. Finn Caldwell Burners. stretching the legs. Which one's that? That one. But I do really uh, rate the um, work ethic to try and chase back, but couldn't quite catch him. Good kick off behind the defence. Securing a good lines. spot. Not now. Good bit in their half. Lads form two and two. Tombridge needing to exit this. Not in a comfortable Thank position. You just take your time while we do some Ooh. changes, guys. Bomb squad comes on. That's your mark. Johnny, on the fight, Eddie, Johnny. and um, Rufus Hello, James boys. be coming on. See if they can make a difference. This is exactly the scenario you want to come on to. A 21 0 lead. Just a shade over five minutes left to go. And Hurstby Point right, College enjoying themselves here <laughs> with Gordon's <laughs> under 16 sevens. Come on! Oh, ball didn't go five. Watch them, are they ten? Thank you. Let's see what happens. We'll take the ginger one. That's forward, is it, Chris? A great try if it stands. Sorry, Matt, I can't hear you. Time's off, guys. 
Have a look at that. Sorry, I couldn't hear the comments. Last pass, happy? I'm happy. Fantastic. Bryce stands. Hard angle to kick, though. <laughs> Hard angle. See if he can make it. Guys, have the way the kick! Try awarded. There was some debate as to whether it was a forward pass or not, but between the referee and his touch judge, they agreed it was flat. Try stands and Hurstpier Point College are out to a 26 0 lead. I tell you what, it was nearly 28. It was a cracking effort at the conversion there from the touchline. Here we have a look at it again. Oh, I don't know about that one. Maybe uh, has got let off. Got um, given that. Dying again. Good restart. Fumbled. Good handoff, but pulled it back. AR call from that time by White. First, uh, regathering the ball. Thanks, Josh. Guys, two of you are trying to do properly in four of you on, so let's just keep that gap until this uh, call set, okay? Crunch. Bind. Hold there. Sit. Good scrum from Tombridge. Hurst managed to get it though. Here. Ned, tag it. Tag it, doesn't want the outside. Thank you. Another, another great try for Hurst for a point. Really, really putting their foot in this game. I don't know if Tombridge can find their way back into oh, it. In my eye. They're really enjoying themselves out there now, Hurst for point college, aren't they? They really are. Well, a little under three minutes left to play, and Hurstpier Point College, after a cagey beginning to the game, yep. have yep. just exploded into life and now really are getting to experience all the joys of sevens out here. Offside off the restart to put it back. 11 in front. I mean, I've noticed the uh, refs are really harsh on the offsides, um, sometimes handing out the yellow cards, which is very indefinite. It's been a real feature of the game, offsides, particularly off penalties and not being back 10 has been a real problem. Yeah, definitely. Here's kick chase. Unlucky, regathered, great pick up. And it's a try. <laughs> a great try, a great regather, a great pick up. Hurst may be a bit sleeping, but... I think with a 31-0 uh, lead, I think they'll be all right. Yes, it's all right. 37 now. Just about. I think I think after after yesterday, we've decided that 27 is the high water mark. You, keep, you can come back from 26, but 27 is a point too far. So yeah. 31, they should be fine. Sharp work from Tunbridge, though. Really sharp work. Seizing the bouncing ball. I think now it's really important for her to be able to um, see out the game. Get our game now and just calm down and keep composure. Great take from Ed Scorey. Happy with that. Great take. Ports there. For Rory. Will be. Long spin pass out to, to Rufus James. Great. Beats, beats three. Gets her eventually tackled. <laughs> penalty against her. Stop the jackal. Unlucky penalty against her. Sorry. It's been a big feature of Tunbridge's game, though, has been their work on the floor. Definitely. In a real strength. Very strong in the in the uh, in the rock in the breakdown. Tackled. Watch those two. Tackle. Off oh, feet, leave it. Oh. Yes. <laughs> no, over there, over there, over there. Again. We supported. Tombridge bring being very disciplined yeah. at the breakdown, and Hurst just not quite doing it. <laughs> Another try for Tombridge. Hurst sleeping, I think. Need to get back at it. Yeah, another try for Tunbridge. It's not quite squeaky bum time, but they won't be too comfortable with this one. Harry Mathers coming back on. 
tired Rory and First ball for the restart. And is that end of the game? That is full time. Hurstbeer Point College take the victory. 31 points to 14 against Tunbridge. A family affair in many ways. And a wonderful victory for Hurstbeer Point College to finish this group stage for them. There is one more game left here on the live stream in the group stages. And that is in Pool 4, Maystone Grammar against Trinity coming up at 12.15. And then we have a little break for lunch and then we are into the knockouts where Hurstbeer Point College will be looking to see if they can get their hands on some silverware. But it all finishes up. Hurstbeer Point College 31, Tunbridge 14. And thank you very much for joining me. Some excellent comms there. Underway then in this final game of the group stages. Maystone Grammar School against Trinity. Trinity in blue. Or Trinity in royal blue, I should say. Maystone Grammar School in dark blue with the gold slash across it. It's an early yellow card. Got an overlap, off you go. Trinity are going to be playing against six players for the next couple of minutes. Trinity moving the ball to the outside. There's a bit of space. Could they get away for the try? Over the line they go. Ezekiel Asigo. Showing great power, great strength, and great finishing to open the scoring for Trinity. Now, as things stand, Coming into this game, as things stood, Trinity were third in the group. Two wins from their three games. The Oratory currently top of the group, undefeated. The victory here and the defeat for the Oratory in their game. They would well see Trinity in with a chance of cup qualification. Maystone Grammar, meanwhile, searching for a first victory of the day and to avoid going home before the knockout stage and they're finding a bit of space around the outside Alex Hayward with the score 
the fastest player in the team and he showed every bit of that pace there the scorch away or oh, the try conversion good as well and Maidstone Grammar School move into the lead It was a good late pass out to Hayward, which just allowed him to get on the outside, and then he just used all of that pace that we've heard about to get himself through. Live, live, not now. Black as your mark. Someone in the channel? Wait, please. Let's go. Hold. No, maybe we're taking it in. Play on. Lost. Trinity. Looking to strike back. Oh, wow, that is real pace around the outside. Superb, superb pace from Joel Adu Kwapong. <laughs> and it says in my notes here that he's extremely quick, and my word, that might even be an under understatement. Kick back through. Kick back through. Kick Stunning pace to burn around the outside, restore the Trinity advantage. And with a conversion as well, they move to a 12-7 lead. Just look at this raw speed. One-on-one -on -one with the quickest player in the Maidstone team. And he just scorches around the outside. That is utterly brilliant. But Maidstone find a way to get the ball back in the hands of their own speedster. Alex Hayward gets away for his second try of the game. Unsurprisingly, he's absolutely shattered after it as well. Two tries for Hayward, two for Maidstone Grammar. We're all level at 12 apiece, but this conversion would nudge them into the lead and so they do 14 12 maidstone now leave and we are just going pace for pace here the speedsters getting it done here at the gordons under 16 invitational sevens Yes, Ole. Tackle move, Black! Trinity. Looking to strike back immediately. 13 level they have possession and a penalty. Miles away from the mark. 13 never on side. Referee for this one, I should say, is Chris Mulroy. The way. There, where you are. The rain starts to come back. Trinity surging through. Looks as though he wanted to give the pass, but Ben Beadle ends up going all on his own. The Saracens youngster played plenty of first 15 rugby this year. Big, big future ahead of him. And a wonderful try there to send us into half time with Trinity leading Maidstone Grammar, 19 points to 14. But let's have another look at that score. Got on the outside and he really was looking to be able to get the offload one handed out to the right hand side. But in the end, such was the way he'd burst through that the seas had parted for him. 
That leaves us at half time. Trinity leading 19 14 here against Maidstone Grammar School in this final game of the pool stages. Played by Blue first, play on! Back underway. Knock on in the air from Blue Scrum Black. Trinity leading Mason Grammar at the start of the second half. 19 points to 14. Have a Maystone Grammar scrum yes, on the 10 metre line. Maidstone, if you're just joining us, in okay, navy blue with the Five. red and yellow Set. slashes across it. Hold. Trinity in royal blue. Off ahead, play on! Loose ball falls into the hands of Trinity. In particular, Watson. And they stab it into a bit of space. How's the bounce? Ball's still alive. Just skips off the boot and into touch. Blue, that's your mark. Blue, back you go. Wait. Hey, Blue offside. Trinity were offside. Oh, we'll okay, no, it's fine. And Maidstone. Possession. Scored a couple of crackers already. And they get a third. Offload off the floor. Might just open up some space. Ties in a few defenders as well. They had options to the right hand side. They still might. Cutting back towards the left-hand side now. He's dipping, penalty only. He's falling, penalty, no. Back chat. Sees the penalty, reverse, Trinity. Have possession. And around the outside they go, Watson could be away. Watson, down the left-hand side, he's going to go all the way home. Caden Watson, a Harlequins Academy man, takes advantage of that reversed penalty and extends the advantage. Never touched a rugby ball before he joined Trinity at Caden Watson. But I'll tell you what, he knows what he's doing with one now. 26-14, his team lead. The kickoff goes over the Maystone catchers. Falls into the hands of Trinity, who might look for another. And they're going to get another. It's going to be a second score for Ezekiel Lasigo. Back-to-back tries to Trinity. And suddenly, having been in a very, very tight game, 
They now have a lead that looks commanding. 33-14 in front. Three minutes left in the game. Six kicking the ball away. Forward pass becomes a penalty. Discipline just starting to creak here. The main stone. Trinity starting to flood through gaps now. Playing the ball on the floor. Giving away the penalty. Backwards, play on. All backwards. Stone. Showing good patience here, just no, trying no, to find your hands. Good work. a chink in the Dulwich defence. Good pick up off the toes. Bouncing ball though is loose and into the hands of Trinity. You might fancy a go at another try. That's a good tackle. Trying to find some space for the offload. They get it away. That's good play from Trinity. Tackle. Deep into the 22 now. Patient build up. Play on. He's won it. Maidstone might just have nicked that on the floor. They have. Never on board. Yeah, good work. A chance here to break away. They just run into a bit of heavy traffic. They might Nothing have had numbers. No hands, Still might have numbers. They've got the penalty as well. There you are. Rook has fallen, hands number five. One and only one, he's got to leave your hands. He's got to leave oh, your hands when you Excellent tackle, right? bit of refereeing as well. Ball has got to leave the hands. A nice tap penalties. Excellent refereeing. Knock on in the All lost forward. Trinity have it. Just a knock on advantage. <laughs> Nothing coming. We're coming back for a knock on in the tackle scrum. Drifts forward the in the pass, so we'll come back for the scrum. Nothing coming. Knock on. Scrum It's going to be very close to the final play. Yeah, There's only 30 seconds left on the clock, and the ball's on the far side of the field. And this change is being made. May very well end up being the final play. Let's go, please, 20 Come seconds on. left to go. Let's Ten seconds. We definitely are into the final play. Five. Set. Let's go, five, please. <laughs> Stepping back off the competition. This side. Penalty Step made, Stone. Here. Direct contact, but he's dipping. Another penalty, yellow card for Trinity. Off you go. Nick Thorne is going to spend the remainder of the game on the sidelines, and could just be a gap here for Maidstone Grammar School. Trying their best to keep this alive and making a pretty good fist of it as well as they go. Try and get round the All outside. Offload goes to Trinity's hands, though. And Trinity are going to be able to see this one out. Got ambitions to try and score another, though, by the looks of things. Keeping it moving. And they are going to score another one. Surely they are. Beadle gets the big fend away and Beadle. Gets his second score of the game. Trinity, finish with a try. Finish this morning's session with a try. And it's going to be victory for Trinity. Oh. Players on both sides absolutely out on their feet. Conversion is good, and that is full time. Trinity with the victory, 40 points to 14. A tight game in the first half, but Trinity exploded into life in the second half.
and finish it off with this try from the young maestro Ben Beadle. Full time here in the final game of the pool stage. Trinity 40, Maidstone Grammar School 14. And there's a brief break now for lunch. Go and get yourselves rested, get some food on board, but do stay with us because at 1.15, it's into knockout rugby. The semi-final bowl at 3.15, the cup semi-final at 1.35, and the cup final at 2.10 here on the live stream. Don't miss any of it this afternoon. All time, Maidstone 14, Trinity 40. At Gordon's, there are students and staff from over 40 different countries, each bringing their own unique individuality to the school. There are things that we have in common and things we don't. Sometimes there seems to be us and them. It might seem easy to label people, those who are athletic, Musical, adventurous, performers, leaders, role models, and those who are still finding their way. You have been selected to represent our school and what makes our school unique. I'm going to ask you a series of questions and I hope that you'll answer them honestly. There are also those of us who are never on time. Were or are the class clowns? There are those who prefer a bath to a shower. Those who love Marmite. And those who have lost someone they love. Those who have donated to charity, live in another country, have felt insecure. As those who have found their passion, those who have felt under pressure, and those who have celebrated others. There's those who have done a good deed in the last 24 hours, have experienced failure, been proud of themselves. And then there's those who represent Gordons. Although we do not have everything in common, it is Gordon's school that brings us together.
Introducing Next Gen 15, the new home of school rugby. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, a great tackle here. Oh. It's not good enough. One, two, skip a few and with the wheels. Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What's a kick? Where did he come from? Down in all your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 50. At Gordon's, 
There are students and staff from over 40 different countries, each bringing their own unique individuality to the school. There are things that we have in common and things we don't. Sometimes it seems to be us and them. It might seem easy to label people. Those who are athletic, musical, adventurous, performers, leaders, role models, and those who are still finding their way. You have been selected to represent our school and what makes our school unique. I'm going to ask you a series of questions and I hope that you'll answer them honestly. There are also those of us who are never on time. Were or are the class clowns? There are those who prefer a bath to a shower. Those who love Marmite. And those who have lost someone they love. Those who have donated to charity, live in another country, have felt insecure. There's those who have found their passion, those who have felt under pressure, and those who have celebrated others. There's those who have done a good deed in the last 24 hours, have experienced failure, been proud of themselves. And then there's those who represent Gordon's. Although we do not have everything in common, it is Gordon's school that brings us together. Introducing Next Gen 15, the new home of School Rugby. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. What a great tackle! Oh. It's not good enough! One, two, skip a few and with the wheels! Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What a kick! Where did he come from? How did that happen? All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 50.
At Gordon's, there are students and staff from over 40 different countries, each bringing their own unique individuality to the school. There are things that we have in common, and things we don't. Sometimes, there seems to be us, and them. It might seem easy to label people, those who are athletic, Musical, adventurous, performers, leaders, role models, and those who are still finding their way. You have been selected to represent our school and what makes our school unique. I'm going to ask you a series of questions and I hope that you'll answer them honestly. There are also those of us who are never on time. Were or are the class clowns? There are those who prefer a bath to a shower. Those who love Marmite. And those who have lost someone they love. Those who have donated to charity, live in another country, have felt insecure. As those who have found their passion, those who have felt under pressure, and those who have celebrated others. There's those who have done a good deed in the last 24 hours, have experienced failure, been proud of themselves. And then there's those who represent Gordons. Although we do not have everything in common, it is Gordon's school that brings us together. Introducing Next Gen 15, the new home of School Rugby. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, that's a great tackle here. It's not good enough. One, two, three. 
Look at the view with the wheels. Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What's a kick? Where did he come from? And how did that happen? All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 15. At Gordon's, there are students and staff from over 40 different countries, each bringing their own unique individuality to the school. There are things that we have in common, and things we don't. Sometimes, it seems to be us, and them. 
It might seem easy to label people. Those who are athletic, musical, adventurous, performers, leaders, role models, and those who are still finding their way. You have been selected to represent our school and what makes our school unique. I'm going to ask you a series of questions and I hope that you'll answer them honestly. There are also those of us who are never on time. were or are the class clowns. There are those who prefer a bath to a shower. Those who love Marmite. And those who have lost someone they love. Those who have donated to charity, live in another country, have felt insecure as those who have found their passion, those who have felt under pressure, and those who have celebrated others. There's those who have done a good deed in the last 24 hours, have experienced failure, been proud of themselves. And then there's those who represent Gordon's. Although we do not have everything in common, it is Gordon's school that brings us together. Introducing Next Gen 15, the new home of School Rugby. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, it's a great tackle! Oh. It's not good enough! One, two, skip a few and with the wheels! Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and a regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What a kick! Well, he come from? And how did that happen? All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 50.
At Gordon's, there are students and staff from over 40 different countries, each bringing their own unique individuality to the school. There are things that we have in common and things we don't. Sometimes it seems to be us and them. It might seem easy to label people, those who are athletic, musical, adventurous, performers, leaders, role models, and those who are still finding their way. You have been selected to represent our school and what makes our school unique. I'm going to ask you a series of questions and I hope that you'll answer them honestly. There are also those of us who are never on time. were or are the class clowns. There are those who prefer a bath to a shower. Those who love Marmite. And those who have lost someone they love. Those who have donated to charity, live in another country, have felt insecure as those who have found their passion, those who have felt under pressure, and those who have celebrated others. There's those who have done a good deed in the last 24 hours, have experienced failure, been proud of themselves. And then there's those who represent Gordons. Although we do not have everything in common, it is Gordon's school that brings us together. Introducing Next Gen 15, the new home of School Rugby. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, it's a great tackle here. It's not good enough. One, two, skip a few and with the wheels. Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What a kick! Where did he come from? And how did that happen? All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 50.
Good afternoon and welcome back to the Gordon School Under-16 Invitational Sevens and we are in the knockout stages. Three more games live here on Next Gen 15. Bowl semi-final coming up in just a couple of moments' time. I think we're already a couple of minutes behind schedule. The uh, referee's a bit tardy getting out of their changing rooms. It's Tunbridge against Dulwich in that bowl semi-final. And then we're into the cup. Shiplake College against the Oratory in that cup semi-final. Following this game and then the final game of the day, 20 past two, the cup final. And just to run you through who's in everything, obviously fifth place in the groups, uh, their day ended at lunchtime. Fourth place in the groups through to the shield. Third to the bowl, second to the plate, and first to the cup. Cup semi-finals, Shiplake College against the Oratory, Brighton College against Ipswich, plate. First Pier Point College against Trinity, and Bishop Wordsworth against Eton College. Bowl, this game just about to kick off in front of us. Tunbridge against Dulwich College and Fimbra against Mill Hill at the Shield, Gordon's against Seaford College, and Sherbin against St George's College, Weybridge. And we are underway here in this bowl semi-final. Dulwich College in blue and in possession. Tunbridge in pink and white. And intercepting, surely to open the scoring. No, ball goes down. But it went backwards, and they're away for the try. Tunbridge with a dream start. Yeah, keep it from behind if possible. And I should say, we do have a team sheet actually for Tunbridge, uh, but unfortunately, as you can see, they don't have uh, numbers on their shirts. As is the, the Tunbridge way for a few years now, actually. The pink and white shirts. Uh, but I will run through the team so everyone gets their shout out Tiger Bussy, Jack Bourne, Archie Denny, Sam Pearl, Seb Cox, Sam Blackburn, Manny Tomazos, Tom Wilde, Harry Slade, Rufus Folks, Barnaby Grant, and Luke Cole in the Tunbridge team. Oh. Referee having a bit of trouble keeping uh, correct number of balls on the field. Oh. Had two, then had none, now he's got one. And we're about ready to go again. Tunbridge leading seven points to nil here against Dulwich College. Oh. So some tremendous performances from Dulwich in the morning session and they've struck right back here. Tunbridge's lead won't last long as Dulwich <laughs> race away underneath the posts. And what should be a simple conversion to follow as well. Conversion is indeed landed seven points apiece, and just look at this for a try from deep inside their own 22. They make the half break, the offload is good, and then it's just pure pace through the middle. Offloading nicely, Kent side. These two famous old rivals. Umbridge and Dulwich College, tremendous team through the years. <laughs> Dulwich get the penalty. Again, spoke about this in the morning. It's been something the referees have been hot on, is players getting back 10 from penalties. Tunbridge failed to do it, and Dulwich capitalised with their second try of the game. A bit of cramp as well in the act of scoring. Wide at least, just outside of 15. Conversion is an absolute beauty from Dulwich College. 
helps them to a 14-7 lead. Seven nil down, they've turned it around. Tunbridge with a late pass. Helps them through the hole, keeping the ball alive as well. Bending off would-be tacklers, now moving the ball. Could there be a bit of space on this right-hand side for Tunbridge? There might just be a little show and go through the gap. And he's got the pace to finish as well. Tunbridge strike back. Great play from Tunbridge. They worked so hard to stay on their feet through contact, to keep the ball alive, to keep moving it, moving that point of contact. And when they got the ball wide, they had the wherewithal to get across the try line. Conversion good as well. And we're back to all square, 14 points apiece. Tunbridge defence, but Tunbridge have their measure for now. Now Dulwich get half a break. Oh, if they could have got the hands free, there might have been an opportunity there. To the right-hand side, and they find a bit of space. Pass just slightly behind the man, so he has to check his stride, but then he steps back inside and puts the hammer down. Can he get the fend away? He's working his way towards the try line, gets across in the corner. Patient play from Dulwich. Okay, that'll be the half. And then incisive when the opportunity arrived. Just on the 15, please. Conversion's a cracker, off the post and over. Brilliant effort. That gives Dulwich College the 21-14 lead at half-time. That finish in the corner, the difference at the moment. Tunbridge. Trailing Dulwich College at half-time in this bowl final. 21 points to 14. Short half time is over. A little chance for me to tell you that the refereeing team for this one is led by Harry Groves with Hollywood and Neil Whittington. Running touch. Fine job they've been doing as well. Reminder this is the bowl semi finals. Tunbridge against Dulwich College, the other one. Finbert against Mill Hill. We'll meet in the bowl final. No hands! Dulwich College 
currently leading 21 points to 14. Trailed 7-0 initially. Came roaring back for a 14-7 lead. Tunbridge then leveled things up. Before Malich scored at the end of the half. For a 21-14 Nine. Crouch. Bind. Set. <laughs> Penalty Dulwich. Shifting the ball to left hand side, but it's lost forward. Tumbridge have it back in their possession. Huge tackle comes in, but they do really well to get the offload away. It was that offload that yielded that early score. They're getting that offload game going again. Another attempt there. Ball went backwards, but then played on the floor. Dulwich penalty. Moving the ball. This sort of build-up play has worked so successfully for Dulwich. So they just test it around the right-hand side. Is there a bit of space? No. A good smother tackle. I say a good smother tackle. It was high. Penalty to Dulwich. On they press. Scrum Dulwich inside the Tunbridge 22. Four minutes left to play. A try here. Bind. Really would. Set. Of Dulwich almost with one foot in that final. The shove comes on. Dulwich have it. Passes loose but falls into their hands. Tunbridge tackling is good, but the offloading good as well. A bit of space on the outside as there. No, dances back in. Tackle comes in. A little dummy around the fringe, then the offload. Lovely play from Dulwich College. Still going. Offload again. Ball lost forward in the tackle. Deliberately so. No, offside, says the referee. Penalty to Dulwich. The left-hand side, they move it. Big tackle coming in from Tunbridge. This defence has been solid and so solid it's yielded a turnover. They are still in this semi-final. Little hitch kick and then the pass. No, boo! Thank you. Huge tackle coming in. Always on the ball. A reminder that at the conclusion of this game, we move on to the cup semi finals and Ship Lake College against the Oratory. I'll tell you what, the crowd in front of me is really starting to build for that one. Excitement is palpable. Plenty of time left in this bowl semi final, though, and Tunbridge could well be about to level things up, scorching away into the 22. No one's going to catch him. That defensive pressure pays off. 
And with under two minutes left to play, we are surely going to be all square. Conversion for underneath the posts to come that would level this one up. He's got 10 seconds. Referee really trying to rush this one through. But it doesn't bother Tunbridge one bit. They get the conversion, 21 points all. Less than 90 seconds left. I might need to brush up on my rules here on what happens if we get a draw. We'll worry about that when the time comes, eh? We'll worry about that in a moment. Tunbridge with a kickoff. Extra time of five minutes, by the way, will be played in the event of a draw. Golden point, so once the side scores, that's that. But 40, 40 seconds of regulation time left to go. Dulwich up to the halfway line. They don't want extra time. They want to get away for the final try. This could be the game. Brilliant cover tackle from Tunbridge. Fantastic work with the offload off the floor. Oh, that's brilliant. A match winning moment from Dulwich College. Brilliance from Dulwich College. Can you go behind, please? Wait for me, then. There will be a little bit of time, I think. Time on, we will restart. And free confirming that we will restart the game. Following the conversion attempt. But it will be an all or nothing attempt from the kickoff. Conversion is good. 28 points to 21, Dulwich lead. As we see the replay of that try. Stay behind. It was magnificent cover defence. But just watch this, the patience on the floor to get the offload away to the supporting player. Dulwich kick long. Tunbridge gather. They have to score. And they have to convert to send this into extra time. No! They've got a penalty. They go quick. Through the hole they go. Defence is good. Patient from Dulwich. Patient in attack from Tunbridge as they find a bit of space on the outside. Offload, doesn't stick. And that will be that. Dulwich go to the bowl final. A quite brilliant bowl semi-final. It went this way and that. But Dulwich from behind. Found a route to victory and take it 28 points to 21. They will be going to the finals, facing either Finborough or Mill Hill in that bowl final at 2.15. And now it's into the cup, the lead tournament. Shiplake College against the Oratory in just a couple of moments' time. So, following that thrilling bowl semi-final, we move on to the cup games. Shiplake College from Henley up against the Oratory 
from Reading. Good play in there, maroon and blue. The oratory in gold and black. And the crowds have packed the touchline for this one. Referee for this cup semi-final, Emerson Wood, Mul Mike Mulroy and Neil Whittington. Running touch. Quick run through the teams for you. Bertie Demery, Sam Pickering, Sam Baker, Jack Henshaw, Will Kemble, Angus Mullins, Will Huckle, Kane O'Connor, Mikey Taylor Fitzgibbon, Freddie Holgate, Alfie Cheek and Ollie Perkins for Shiplake College. For the Oratory, Joe Clark, Jamie O'Donovan, Max Schutz, Rudy Derbyshire, win Apollo, Jacob Bangs, JJ McCarthy, Ollie Robinson, Max Hucker, Addy Hector, Will Waller, and Nico Valabona for the Oratory. Referee is just about ready. Having handed over his baby that he was watching over during that previous semi final. Now, with the altogether more difficult task of managing this game. The oratory kick deep. Ship Blake safely under it. The rain has started to come down, which is going to make handling difficult. We see an early example of that there, trying to get the offload away, but the ball just a little greasy. Shiplake scrum, but it's well scragged at the base no, leave him now. by the oratory, but it will come back on Shiplake's side. In fact, they'll get a penalty. It's a strong carry from Kane O'Connor. Saw plenty from him earlier on and more impressive carrying. And he's got the penalty for the high tackle on him as well. Loose ball, but it falls on Shiplake's side. They're trying to have a look around the outside. They found a bit of space. Alfie Cheek gets into the opposition half. And another penalty, and I wonder if the referee might just have a word about the penalty count already. Chip Blake, with their tails up at the moment. O'Connor, again a physical Back carry, out. takes two to bring him down. The oratory defence is up fast, good offload. But then loose ball is going to fall forward and it's going to be an oratory scrub. off the base of the scrum. That's a great pass through contact. Fantastic movement there from A.D. Hector. The oratory going from one side to the other. Could there be some space on that far touch line? Not quite. Just like defense trying to make their tackles, but the oratory still moving forward. Could this be the opening score? It might just be Rudy Derbyshire, I think that was. <laughs> From the near touchline to the far touchline, they stretch the defence. And as they cut back inside, those one-on-one -on -one tackles became harder and harder to make. 
and Derbyshire, the county cricketer, finishing off with a plum in the corner. Yeah, yeah. Jed's time's off, he's taking it from the wrong spot. Conversion doesn't quite go, but it's a 5-0 lead for the Oratory. Having repelled a couple of waves of Ship Lake attack. It's the Reading side that have the score. And that man, Rudy Derbyshire, the one that finished it off. kickoff from the oratory claimed by Angus Mullins he's been playing a bit of first 15 rugby this year and moves it on to Mikey Taylor Fitzgibbon Taylor Fitzgibbon had broken free but the ball didn't come with him would have been away could there be a chance for the try scorer Derbyshire on the other side no tackles come in on him Well, the ball is going this way and that's back in Ship Lake possession. All goes down, it is getting wetter and wetter. It's kind of like one of those days at the seaside where the, the air is just wet. Not really raining, it's just wet. Behind it, Brighton College against Ipswich, Set. the other semi final. Winners will meet in the cup final at 2.15 live here on Next Gen 15. And at this rate, it could be the Oratory because they're bursting away for a second score. JJ McCarthy. Around the left hand side. And the London South Central Academy man has yet another try to add to his collection today. Two for the Oratory, one on either side of the field. And a 10-0 lead with just under a minute remaining in this first half of the Cup semi-final. Brilliant burst of acceleration down that left touch line from JJ McCarthy. <laughs> They've got ahead of the kicker there, so we'll come back for a Four ship lake free kick on the halfway line. Four in front. O'Connor, another physical carry, but just lost on the floor. And I think this scrum will be the final action of the half. Referee sounding like you might agree with me on that. Always reassuring. Coach! Find! Set! Big scrum from Chip Lake, but the Oratory get it away. And stick the ball off the field under pressure to take their lead into the half-time break. A cagey opening few minutes, but the Oratory burst into life with two tries. First from Rudy Derbyshire, and then with a burst of speed from JJ McCarthy to head into this half-time break, leading Shiplake College 10 points to nil. The Oratory 10, Shiplake College nil. Half-time here 
Gordon's under 16 Invitational Sevens Cup semi final. time just drawing to a close just a reminder of the remainder of today just one more game after this one which is that cup final be a little bit of a break between the end of this game and that one obviously just to give the players a bit of rest so 215 that cup final between the winner of this game and the winner of the game on the field behind us Ipswich and Brighton College the oratory leading 10 points to nil. Will it be them going to the final or can Shiplake mount a second half comeback? We are about to find out as the oratory in their gold and black hoops receive the kickoff through try scorer JJ McCarthy. And there's the other try scorer, Rudy Derbyshire, who gets the ball inside and it's going to be a magical start to the second half for the oratory, is it? They're going to get away for the score, 80 Hector. No sooner had the second half started than the Oratory were away for their third try of the game. Conversion doesn't go. But a 15-0 lead now for the Oratory, who must feel they've got one foot in that cup final. Brilliant play down the left-hand side. The ball back in field from Derbyshire and then the pace to finish from A.D. Hector. Plenty of time for Ship Lake College to come back into it, though. O'Connor collects the high ball. Crabs in field. Throws off one would-be tackler. Throws off a second. Charges through a third. Tries to get the offload away, but it doesn't go. And there could be an opening here for the Oratory. Draw and give on the outside. They step back in. Still going. Big Fend, a fourth try. Ollie Robinson. was such good play initially from O'Connor but when the ball went loose the oratory were just so quick to respond I thought Robinson might try and go around the outside instead he stepped in and with that big big fend he extends the lead and this one's converted for a 22-0 lead Kick off evades everyone and bounces out into touch. Ship Blake will have the line out. Goal, that's your mark on the end of the paint. I need one in the channel, please. No, you're on the end of the paint. End of the paint now, come to you. Step up. Come this way. Ship Blake secure the ball. And they find a bit of space. All just lost, oratory scrum. Blake 
Three and a half minutes left to go. On the blue, please. Big scrum from Ship Lake. Ball straight out though. We'll reset. reset. Quick reset. Coach. Find. Set. Ship Lake trying to get the offload away, but. Chasing the game a little, they're having to force it. But it was lost forward by the oratory in the end. So it will be a scrum to Ship Lake. There is enough time, but they do need to score quickly. Chip Lake, burst clear from the scrum. Could they be away? Scrambling defence. Penalty to Chip Lake. And still there is time. Need to score. Over in the other semi-final, by the way, Ipswich have just scored to narrow the gap to 28-17. Brighton College leading over there. The Oratory leading here, 22-0. Got to tap it. In fact, it's 28-19 in the other game. Brighton College leading Ipswich. Ship Lake. Ship Lake through. Can they get the ball down? Yes, they can. Try for Huckle. The Luxembourg International with the try. Conversion doesn't go. And with under a minute left, it might be too little too late. But they've got the score they needed. Timing. Mullins will get us restarted. O'Connor catches it straight from the kickoff. Just catches a foot in touch, but another bit of outstanding play from Kane O'Connor. Penalty. Ship late, go quick. The oratory weren't 10. It's going to be a yellow card. We're into the last five seconds, though. The Oratory are going to win this cup semi-final, but Ship Lake could finish it with a bang. <laughs> Mullins scampers over in the corner. They do finish it on a high. Conversion doesn't go, but that's it. The Oratory are into the final. Over in the other game, by the way, Ipswich have just scored again, and that game is now a four-point game. But it's just ended as well. Your cup final at 2.15 is going to be the Oratory against Brighton College. What a game that's set to be. Hats off, though, to Ship Lake College. They stayed in it. Those two late tries, no less than they deserved. But the Oratory, with some scintillating rugby down the flanks, are through to the Gordons Under-16 Invitational Cup Final. A 22-10 victory here over Shiplake College. And the final at 2.15 will be live here on Next Gen 15. The Oratory against Brighton College. Stay with us for that one. It's going to be a cracker.
that coordinate, there are students and staff from over 40 different countries. Each bringing their own unique individuality to the school. There are things that we have in common, and things we don't. Sometimes it seems to be us and them. It might seem easy to label them. Those who are athletic, musical, adventurous, performers, leaders, role models, and those who are still finding their way. You have been selected to represent our school and what makes our school unique. I'm going to ask you a series of questions and I hope that you'll answer them honestly. There are also those of us who are never on time. What are the class clowns? There are those who prefer a bar to a shower. Those who love Marmite. And those who have lost someone they love. Those who have donated to charity live in another country felt insecure as those who have found their passion, those who have felt under pressure, and those who have celebrated others. There's those who have done a good deed in the last 24 hours, have experienced failure, been proud of themselves. And then there's those who represent borders. Although we do not have everything in common, it is Gordon's school that brings us together. Introducing Next Gen 50, the new home of School Rugby. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, it's a great tackle here. It's not good enough. One, two, skip a few and with the wheels. Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and a regular update of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What a kick! Well, all your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 50.
At Gordon, there are students and staff from over 40 different countries, each bringing their own unique individuality to the school. There are things that we have in common, but things we don't. Sometimes it seems to be us and them. It might seem easy to label people, those who are athletic, musical, adventurous, performers, leaders, role models, those who are still finding their way. You have been selected to represent our school and what makes our school unique. I'm going to ask you a series of questions and I hope that you'll answer them honestly. There are also those of us who are never on time. There are those who prefer a bath to a shower. Those who love Marmite. And those who have lost someone they love. Those who have donated to charity live in another country. I felt insecure as those who have found their passion, those who have felt under pressure, and those who have celebrated others. There's those who have done a good deed in the last 24 hours, have experienced failure, been proud of themselves. And then there's those who represent Gordon. Although we do not have everything in common, it's Gordon's school that brings us together. Introducing Next Gen 15, the new home of School Rugby. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, that's a great tackle! Oh. It's not good enough! One, two, skip a few and with the wheels! Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What a kick! Well, where did he come from? And how did that all your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 15.
Pogo Day Sprint. At Gordon's, there are students and staff from over 40 different countries, each bringing their own unique individuality to the school. There are things that we have in common, and things we don't. Sometimes it seems to be us and them. It might seem easy to label them, those who are athletic. Musical, adventurous, performers, leaders, role models, those who are still finding their way. You have been selected to represent our school and what makes our school unique. I'm going to ask you a series of questions and I hope that you'll answer them honestly. There are also those of us who are never on time. Were or are the class clowns? There are those who prefer a bath to a shower. Those who love marmite. And those who have lost someone they love. Those who have donated to charity, live in another country, have felt insecure. As those who have found their passion, those who have felt under pressure, and those who have celebrated others. There's those who have done a good deed in the last 24 hours. Okay, boys, let's go. Welcome back to Gordon School for the cup final of the Gordon School under 16 Invitational Sevens. It's Brighton College against the Oratory. And it is a monster of a game. Three other finals, by the way, going on whilst this one is as well the plate final between Hurstbury Point College and Bishop Wordsworth the bowl final between Dulwich College and Fimbra and the shield final between Seaford College and Eton College but here it is all about the cup final Brighton College against the Oratory we just saw that sensational Oratory semi-final performance can they repeat the trick against Brighton College who were involved in a hell of a game against Ipswich in their cup semi-final The teams for you quickly before we get started. Brighton College, Oscar Aziz, Luca Christie, Angus Yule, Ollie Miller, Monty Taylor, James Dutton, Theo Lawson, Oliver Farlam, Harper Heyman, Sam Bishop and Andrew Rourke as Brighton College kick off in their blue and purple kit. The Oratory in gold and black and going around the outside through JJ McCarthy. Back inside. Could this be an early opening score for the Oratory? Not quite intercepted by Brighton College. A fast start in this semi final, in this cup final, rather. The Oratory, by the way, just to run through their team. As Brighton College seek a bit of space down this left hand side. Joe Clark, Jamie O'Donovan, Max Schultz, Rudy Derbyshire, Win Apollo, Jacob Bangs, JJ McCarthy, who we've just seen flying down the right hand side. Ollie Robinson, Max Hucker, AD Hector, Will Waller. And Nico Vallabonna as Brighton College chipped the ball through. 
but just knocked on. There was a chance, a real chance. Knock on, strong goal. Both sides showing early signs of what they can do. Referee for Set. this one, by the way, Chris Mulroy. Team of four assistant referees. What with this being a final? Oh, backwards, play on. <laughs> Ten in front of the kick. Penalty, Brighton College. Keep an eye out for Ollie Miller wearing four there. The real live wire. Brighton playing as they do from top to Off bottom ahead, in the school. Real sense of adventure, but also calmness. Blue going forwards, blue scrum restart. Crouch! Bye! Set! Use it! The archery put real pressure on Brighton College there, but Brighton emerged with the ball. Not where they want to be though, and they lose the ball forward. It's going to be a scrum to the archery, five metres out. First big opportunity goes to the oratory. Can they capitalize? Come across, come across Blue, come across. Valabono will Crouch. put in. Five. Set. Gets it out quickly. Decides to go himself. Gets almost to the edge of the defender. Gets the pass away and across the line. Go the oratory. They did make the chance count. Joe Clark it was that got across the line. They fly half for the first 15 this season. And enjoying himself in under 16's colours today. Five nil. The oratory lead. Valabona took it on himself, got the pass away. And Clark was there to crash over. Number 10 in front, AR4, 10 in front. Back 10, back 10, back 10. The oratory offside at the kickoff, though, so Brighton College gets a go and find a bit of space. Shoveling the ball inside, and there could be a bit of space if they can get the ball to it. They try the kick pass, works out rather nicely, unconventional, but could be effective. Monty Taylor weaving through and into the 22, gets the pop away to Ollie Miller, and Miller goes underneath the post. Instant reply from Brighton College. Conversion is good, seven points apiece. The kick pass came in, unorthodox but effective. Monty Taylor then surging into the 22 and then, how about this? Just pops it up off the deck and Miller swerves away to score. Seven points all. But McCarthy doesn't fancy it being that way for long. He doesn't fancy it that much. Play at all, hand. almost up to the try line is JJ McCarthy. But then they give away the penalty off their feet in their bid to try and stop it. And the oratory capitalise instantly. Kick it back from the way. Kick it from that side. And like Brighton College before them, 
It's an instant response from the oratory. Conversion is good. And it was all about the work from JJ McCarthy. Brighton did so well to get that tap tackle in from Yule. But then they got the penalty. And Valabona was on it like a flash to get the try. 14-7, the oratory now lead. That's a beauty of a kickoff as well from Clark. Miller. Right, just spreading the ball from A to B. Rain is really starting to come down now. It's going to be tricky sevens conditions. At Brighton backing their skill set to play out from behind their own try line and doing so effectively up outside the 22 now. Monty Taylor dancing, Miller spreading the ball. Patient build up play from Brighton College. Is there a bit of space on the outside? There might just be, but the pass drifted forwards. But just a sign yeah, there of the sort of sevens Brighton College like to play when they get into their rhythm. Patient build up play, stretching the width, teasing defenders out of position. Pass just Set. drifting forward there. Five. Set. Balobana. Clark. Oh. Runs the hard line and the ball is away. Turnover ball for Brighton College. Can they do something with it? Haven't quite got the numbers. They take it on through Taylor. Now Miller. Advantage over for the knock. Slightly hard from 10. High tackle comes in. Penalty Brighton College. If you grab his neck as well, it's high tackle, isn't it? Miller goes. Taylor moves it now. Kick comes in. Chase is on. It should be won by the Oratory. Or will it be? Brighton College get on it. How's the bounce? Will it sit up? If it's a kind bounce, it's a try, and it's very, very kind. Theo Lawson. Well, how much pace has he got? Because it looked as though the Oratory had that absolutely covered. Yes, yeah. But instead, Brighton College <laughs> paired after it. And Theo Lawson, I think it was, that got the score. Just look at this. The ball sits up. At this stage, you're thinking the oratory are favourites. But out of absolutely nowhere, Lawson was there to stab a foot on it. And when he needed the bounce to slow up, it did just that. And with the conversion following, we head into the halftime break. Honours even in this cup final here at the Gordons Under-16 Invitational Sevens. 14 all, Brighton College and the Oratory are putting on a show. Well, it was a short half-time message from the oratory coaching staff. Mikey Hennessy in charge of things there. His charges were out on the field and ready to go within seconds, really. Brighton College taking just a little bit longer. That's just breathing in the oxygen after the adrenaline hit of that try to end the half. The oratory get us restarted. 14 all here in this cup final against Brighton College anyone's game for the taking. Right, fancy a go around the outside, but not many get around the outside of McCarthy. Sutton fancy the go, but McCarthy got the tackle in. and We'll come back for a scrum. 
Solid scrum from the oratory. They get the ball away, Clark. To McCarthy. McCarthy crabs across the pitch, then stabs a kick in behind, chases on, sits up into Brighton College hands. Now Brighton crabbing across a little bit, straightening now as the tackle comes in. It's poached though by the oratory and then lost forward, greasy ball, doing greasy ball things. Brighton College escape with the scrum. Make sure it's going in with two hands and not one, all right? You happy this side? <laughs> Crouch! Five! Set! Hold! Get the ball away from it safely, and they just decide to thump it downfield. Chases on. Well, this has already worked once for them, but this time it's McCarthy chasing after it and with his pace. He gets back there nice and safely. Your 5 7 got to move quicker. Yeah. Penalty oratory. On the halfway line. Yeah. Well, if you need to know how greasy this ball is, there's an example right there. Yeah. Time off, laces. Time off. Just about four minutes left to play. Still level, 14 points all. On, a reminder, if it stays as a draw, Time's back on. Go to extra time. Five minutes of extra time Five. available. Set. Golden point. Balls first out, try on. First team to score will win. We've got a long way to go before we need to worry about that. Right in college. Looking to break through, and they could well have a big opportunity too because the Oratory are down to six. Deliberate knock on. Wait till the night, and that right? sees Max Hucker, London South Central Academy man, in the bin for the next two minutes. Will Brighton College be able to take Inside advantage? Him. McCarthy Inside just chases Inside after him. that kick. Rain really is coming down now. This game is going to get more and more like 15s than it no, is like him. 7s over the course of the next three and a half minutes. Backwards, play on! Lost backwards by the oratory. We're going to see a few more of those as well. And we're going to see a few more of these as well as the oratory thumper kick downfield. Brighton College have cover in the backfield and evade the first tackler. Could the broken field play to their advantage? It does. There's a bit of space here. Can they get the pass in? They may not need to get the pass in. Brighton College going all the way. Luca Christie gets the score. The seven man Brighton College carve up the broken field against the six man oratory to score their third try of the game. And it's Luca Christie that gets it. Ten seconds. Miller's conversion is good. And it's a 21-14 lead for Brighton College. It was brilliant work in the backfield from Angus Yule. Got the pass away to Christie on halfway. I thought he was going to have to give one more, but Christie had just too much pace around the outside. And his side have 
A 21-14 lead. We've got less than two minutes left to play. What can the oratory do to respond? Well, maybe this man, JJ McCarthy, can do something about it. Fizzes the ball out one further to Ollie Robinson, who has a go around the outside and gets the offload away. And the offload sticks. Now they need one more pass, do they? Miller's over the top of the ball, but gives away the penalty. Could even be a yellow card. It is. Not rolling away. It's the try scorer, Luca Christie, who's in the bin. So we're six aside for the moment. Could there be some space out wide? Ball is loose yeah. and lost forward. First from gold, then from blue scrumbling. It'll be a scrum, Brighton College. And now it's Brighton College that are a man down versus the oratory. Max Hucker back on the field. Seven v six. In the oratory's favour now. Yeah, come on then. Mark's here. Under a minute to go, seven points the difference. Numerical advantage nice, nice to the oratory. Crouch! Let's go, please, please. Five! Set! Big scrum from the oratory. They've turned it over. Could they go crashing over on the far side? Clark goes close. Miller's all over it on the floor, but he's off his feet. Another penalty. The space out wide. If the Oratory can get it to it, they don't need to. Ollie Robinson goes over. It will restart. And there will be time for the restart, says the referee. Will restart, fellas, right? Oh, the drama. We will restart. Hucker's conversion doesn't go. There's some consternation about it. Not entirely sure what happened. What I do know, though, is that we have a two-point game and there is time for one more play. Yeah, clock is in the red, Tyler. Clock is in the red. This is the final play. The oratory need to score. Brighton College lead by two. All they have to do is catch this and get it off the field. It's a contestable kick. The Oratory are herring after it. Everyone's all over it. Miller's trying to get rid. It's been ripped clear. The Oratory have the ball. This is their chance. McCarthy. It's space out wide. Could this be it for the Oratory? Clark's going to do it. The Oratory win. Joe Clark wins it at the death for the oratory. The ball's up there, so they're not going to take the kick. Get the ball. Get the ball. Sensational finish here at Gordon's. No kick. It's all over. The oratory are the champions. 24 points to 21. Stunning stuff. Drama. Here at Gordon School. And this is the winning moment. Hector ripped it clear. And then they moved it wide to Joe Clark. He's been playing for the first 15 at fly half all season. But here he found himself on the outside in the wing position. And he had all the composure, all the pace, and all the power to finish it off. Twenty-one fourteen down they were, and ten points either side of the clock going red. Sees the oratory claim the most dramatic of victories. When Robinson went over, there was less than a minute, less than a second remaining on the clock. 
And when the conversion was missed, we all thought that might be that, but there was time for one more play. And that man, Joe Clark, with the winning moment. I dare say he'll remember that one for a little while. The Oratory of the Champions, 24-21 against Brighton College. Heartbreak, really, for Brighton College. They had been so good. And when they scored that try through Luca Christie, just a couple of minutes before the end, it really felt like that was theirs. But this oratory side, you've been so impressive all day. They really have. That semi-final performance in particular was outstanding. They just did not know how to be defeated. Through Robinson and Clark, they found a way to do it. And so all that remains here of the Gordons under 16 Invitational Sevens is the presentations. <laughs> More trophies to be awarded, the cup, the plate, the bowl and the shield. And that will be happening very, very shortly. You can see there the uh, presentation table being set up. Now, these are going to be as much of a mystery to you as to me because I've been on commentary while the other finals have been going on, so I don't know who's won as much as you don't know who's won. That's going to make it exciting for all of us, though, isn't it? What we do know is exactly who won the cup. It's those boys in gold and black, the oratory winners, the Gordons under 16 Invitational 7s. And so, as these presentations get set up, the oratory players gather in their celebratory huddle and Brighton College just out of shot, gather their composure after a heartbreaking defeat. We may as well run you through what's happened elsewhere. Hurst Pierpoint College claimed the plate with a fantastic 21-0 victory over Bishop Wordsworth. The bowl was taken in an absolute epic. Exactly the same scoreline as in this cup final. Binborough winning it 24-21 against Dulwich College. And in the shield, it was Seaford College. A 26-22 victory over Eton College. Three out of those four finals, absolute crackers, down to one score. So we're just about ready to go. the third or fourth iteration of these trophies being lined up. Uh, obviously a particular order they've got to be in on the table. But, uh, they are lined up. Shield bars, plate and cup. I know it's technically Shield plate, bowl and cup, but the uh, the bowl is rather vase shaped. Right then, we might just be awaiting the other teams that are being presented with their uh, various prizes. I can just see Seaford College making their way across behind the posts 
You might be able to just see them coming into your shot now on the top right hand side of your screens. In fact, just above where they are, you can just see the referees next to that green tent having their photo taken. What a fine job the referees did. Be Chris Mulroy in that final. College making their way. The Oratory are on the field. Brighton College are here as well. I can see Finborough. Yeah. First beer point college. I can see way off in the distance. Over on the, the far side of the other pitch. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure that they know they need to be over here. Someone may need to send a messenger. Let them know that. Uh, some of us are hanging around over on this side, waiting for some presentations to happen, and we need them to get here for that to, to kick off. Well, we can start without them, can't we? It's over a surefire way to get someone over to pick up their prizes, to start giving the prizes out, no? Right, and college just gathering to my right-hand side here for another chat between them. I think they know deep down they've got a lot to be proud of today. Some fantastic work to get into that final and for much of that final. Produce some spectacular rugby. They just, much like yesterday, Six Nations really fell foul of momentum in the end. Come on then, Hurst Pier Point. Someone, someone, someone go and tell Hurst Pier Point on the far side of that field that they need to get over here. You've won the plate, lads. Come on, come and get it. Seven season really is well and truly underway, isn't it? We're going to be back here actually on Friday, the 23rd of February for the under 18s floodlit sevens here at Gordon School. That's Friday, the 23rd of March. It's a busy weekend that not only do we have that, we also have the collegiate sevens on Sunday, the 25th. School that was formerly Colston's now collegiate. That's both a Rugby Sevens and a Netball Sevens tournament, so plenty to get stuck into there. There will be a few Netball celebrities on the mic on the Netball side. Wilf Kemsley is going to be talking you through much of the rugby. The week after, there's all sorts going on. Not least, Sunday, 3rd of March. North of England School Sevens, one of the key tournaments in any season. A huge tournament up at Birkenhead Park for the club on the Wirral. Of course, it's all building towards Northern Park National School Sevens at the end of term. Exclusively live here on Next Gen 15. Pitch RE1 and RE2. We'll be top and tailing each day. The preview and review program every day throughout the tournament. Myself, Joe Burns, and Dave Rogers to Ross and Park stalwarts. Weighing in on anything you want us to, really, if we're honest. We're not picky. Well, Hurst are very slowly making their way now. They're, they're sort of trudging from the far side of that pitch. Someone might have got the message to them that it would be handy if they came over. A great urgency about it. I'm, not, I'm still not 100% sure that they know they're meant to be here.
but uh, I'm sure they'll get the message soon. Hurstfield point players, you can just see now ambling across on the top of your screens on Hurstfield Point College. I'm not normally one to be critical, particularly in the schoolboy rugby, but come on, lads. Some of us have got Sunday roasts that need eating. Well, Brighton College have done their best to wait around for the presentations, but they've, they've decided that it's, it's time to hit the showers. Pretty reasonably enough, they stuck around for a good 10 minutes. And at last, SP Point College start to emerge. Well, they are. The trouble is that they're, they're based not too far away from Brighton College and they know the lads quite well and they've, uh, they've all stopped to have a chat. Oh lads, you can have a chat later. Go. We're underway with presentations. Now, of course, you don't know what he's saying, so I'll, I'll let you know. He's saying thank you, everyone, for coming. And everyone's had an enjoyable day. We certainly have had an enjoyable day. You know, it's been absolutely brilliant. The rugby has been absolutely sensational. Some of the skills on show. I mean, remember, this has been an under-16s tournament. Skills on show would not have looked amiss in an under-18s environment. It's been absolutely fantastic. Oh, we've just got a shout out and a thank you. That's always exciting, isn't it? Thank you all for watching. That's the most important thing. Thank you all for watching what has been truly a sensational day of schoolboy rugby, school sevens. And now to the presentations, beginning with the shield. Of course, Eton runners up in that one. Seaford College, the victors in that semi-final, in that final rather, I should say. Step up to receive their shield, Seaford College. Shield champions. The under 16 invitational sevens. And a huge congratulations to Fimbra. Fimbra now come up to collect the ball. Had a tough start to the, to the day, but they really grew into it and deservedly come away with a bit of silverware, or well, a bit of glassware in fact that is. And now the team we've all been waiting for, Hurstbury Point College, received the plaudits for their plate victory. Some really excellent performances from Hurstbury Point College. And now to the big one. Right, College getting a round of applause for, for a fantastic effort. Really did give it absolutely everything. But it's the Oratory of the Champions. Joe Clark comes forward. Try scorer at the end. Firstly, the gates there. AD Hector. He was outstanding all day. As the Oratory received their medals. 
chance to reflect on what was truly a magnificent display from them. Not only in that final, but right throughout the competition. <laughs> Semi-final victory over Seaford College, over Shipley College, I should say, rather. It was absolutely outstanding. That man there just receiving his medal, really Derbyshire was outstanding. So too, Ollie Robinson, who scored the try before the final play. And that man there, who scored the winning try, that gave the orange tree that dramatic cup final victory. And off they go for the photos. And so all that remains is for us to say thank you very much to all of you for watching and a huge congratulations to Seaford College, to Finborough, to Hurstpier Point College, to all the other teams that were involved here today at Gordon's and especially a big thank you to Gordon School. But most importantly of all, a huge, huge congratulations to the Oratory. Sensational stuff. One of the most dramatic victories you'll see. And there they are with their winner's banner, the Oratory School champions here at the Gordons Under-16 International Sevens, International Sevens, Invitational Sevens, I should say. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for joining us. Have a great rest of your weekend. We'll see you next time. At Gordon's, there are students and staff from over 40 different countries, each bringing their own unique individuality to the school. There are things that we have in common, and things we don't. Sometimes, it seems to be us, and them. It might seem easy to label people, those who are athletic, Musical, adventurous, performers, leaders, role models, and those who are still finding their way. You have been selected to represent our school and what makes our school unique. I'm going to ask you a series of questions and I hope that you'll answer them honestly. There are also those of us who are never on time. Were or are the class clowns? There are those who prefer a bath to a shower. Those who love Marmite. And those who have lost someone they love. Those who have donated to charity, live in another country, have felt insecure. As those who have found their passion, those who have felt under pressure, and those who have celebrated others. There's those who have done a good deed in the last 24 hours, have experienced failure, been proud of themselves. And then there's those who represent Gordons. Although we do not have everything in common, it is Gordon's school that brings us together.
Introducing Next Gen 15, the new home of School Rugby. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, it's a great tackle! Oh. It's not good enough! One, two, skip a few and with the wheels! Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What a kick! Where did he come from? How did that happen? All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 50.